YouTube. We have a box. We're going to open it right now. This one. I promise. I don't have anything up my sleeve. Yes, I do. It's this box. It's huge. But we're going to open this one too. And this one's going to be super exciting as well. So we're going to start here and just prolong the suffering. <laughs> So welcome to Brian Phillips RC. If you haven't been with us before, we unbox, build, and radio set up planes, as well as other things. But mostly airplanes is what we do. And there it is, the NX-10. It's the big brother, sister, whatever you want to call it, of the NX-8, which is super exciting, of the NX-6, which is also super exciting. And we are progressing as we go to the 10. And the 10 is just gonna be part of this today. So as you probably have already figured out, we're gonna be unboxing another pretty cool item as well. But we're just gonna get that box out of the way right now. So here we go. Let's open this thing up and show you what it's all about. We're not gonna dig in super deep, but we are gonna be using this going forward. And some of you guys are probably thinking, we wanted the IX-14, well, so did I, but there was a big caveat to that and that is, 99% of the people we watch these videos are gonna be using the NX-8 or the NX-10. And we just said, if we do the IX-14 right now, we may alienate so many people that are watching so they can get help with their radio system. And the NX-10 is gonna set up almost exactly like the NX-8. And so for that reason, we're going with the NX-10 right now. If you guys aren't familiar with how these things come out of the box, we're gonna show you right now. And comes with some extra stickers, which is nice if you want to decorate stuff. It does come with a lengthy manual. The manual, of course, is huge. Oh I don't read these things very often, but if you really, really, really wanted a snooze fest, you could maybe do that. That being said, you can also find any manuals if you have purchased anything from our links in the video description below, you can see down there okay it comes with this tool looks like an adjustment tool uh just a just a hex key and this one comes with a 90 degree uh usb a to usb micro okay so that's how you charge these things and it does come with a lanyard now some notable differences between the eight and the six is that the Eight comes with an additional full channel and then a partial channel. So you go from seven-ish channels up to eight, and then from the eight to the 10, that's the big ticket items. There's a lot of other things too. We're not gonna go over every one of them tonight, but as you can see, it comes with a lanyard. I can't remember if the six came with a lanyard. I don't think that it I did. I feel like it didn't. I don't think it did. Okay, so on the 10, the big control input change is going to be right here uh, the, the gimbals are better, supposedly. I can't tell a difference yet. And then there's sliders back here. And you're like, what the heck are sliders, Brian? Well, sliders are going to basically give you an additional analog channel. So it's not just a three position switch or two position switch. It's gonna actually be a full range slider, okay? So that's really nice when you have to make additional adjustments in the analog world and I'm not sure where I'm gonna use them, but the thing is, it's there, okay? Also, we have all the standard switches that we had before, and we have the left trimmer and right trimmer, so it's gonna be identical to the NX-8 in every other regard, and just to give you guys a quick reminder of how it looks, of course, we're gonna spend some time setting this up. I'm not sure if we're gonna dedicate that in this video, but as you can see, we have all the switches, we have all the knobs with the exception of no sliders. And then I added in a little adapter here so that when I charge, and of course the antenna does fold just like before, and that will fold all the way flat on both. Okay, and I always tie up my lanyards in a certain way just so I can get them out of the way. But if you look here, we have a bigger pack that we added. This does not need to be added when you go up to the NX-10 because it comes with that larger battery. Now, that is like a $52 or $53 battery. So if you get this, 
you're gonna wanna get the bigger battery because it comes with a 2000 instead of a 6000. And so even on my six, we have the larger transmitter pack, which is a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. But again, that is a $50 difference. So remember that when you're making your, your cost comparisons uh, between whether I'm gonna get the six, the eight, or the 10. In this case, I wouldn't recommend getting the six at all. We have run out of channels, uh, I think on three full occasions where we straight up ran out of channels on the eight. Now, we only ran out by one. So we've got a little bit of room for growth with the 10. And so we figured this would be a good time. And by, by the way, case size difference, look at the size. It's exactly the same fit, okay? So that, and, and that's true for the six as well. If you happen to be using the six, you wanna skip from the eight, you wanna skip from the six and just go right to the 10, that's fine too. But the idea is we're not gonna leave you guys high and dry if you're used to seeing the unbox built radio setups here on Brian Phillips RC, which is a big value that we bring to the hobby, or at least we think we bring to the hobby. A lot of you guys have been asking that we keep doing a long format, and that's something that we're struggling with because YouTube, of course, hates that. Uh, they like long videos, but they want them to be, you know, like 10, 15, 20 minutes long. They don't want them to be three hours long. So when they're three hours long, I assume it just fills up their servers and they don't like that. Um, but as long as you guys keep watching them, we don't really care. And that's how you can help us to not be punished by YouTube for having long format content. Now, of course, the other thing that comes with long format content is a lot of information. And we like to help the beginner and the returning hobbyist that's just getting back to flying RC. And that's what we do here is we help get you guys set up so that you can help yourself and you don't have to have a million questions like what is an ESC? I have no idea what that is. I'm used to crystals and all these different things. What do you mean by binding? We go through all that stuff as we go and we'll teach you how to do it. And that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. So if you're new to the channel, we do that. And we wanna help get you from where you are now to where you wanna be. So obviously this unboxing will not be totally dedicated to this radio, but just wanted to show you that it's gonna be here, okay? Now, obviously you've got a lanyard that comes with that and that lanyard is used as such and then you can make your flight controls and you can let go. And when you're manipulating large planes, it's almost necessary to have one of these. And obviously with a throttle cut on, you have less chance of chopping your fingers off, which is kind of handy. So we're just gonna lay this off to the side. In fact, we might even just start charging it right now because I have no idea if the battery's charged. I would assume it's probably not fully charged. So we'll just grab this thing. And one part of this video is gonna be the unbox of the large, huge thing that's over there. And we'll just leave that a big surprise because you surely <laughs> haven't seen it from the thumbnail. We'll just plug in any regular USB port or even better yet, as you advance up the ranks and you end up with an S2200, then it comes with a USB port on the side and another USB-C port for software updates. But what's really nice is while you're charging your packs, you can plug in here and full disclosure, my screen broke and pushed back. I fixed it with some tape. I took it apart. It was not a super hard job, but it did take me a few minutes to do it. And I was thinking about maybe filming it, then I'm like, no, this is just goofy. Not everybody's gonna have that problem. So as you can see, the battery is already installed. You don't have to do anything with it. And I usually cheat and hide a bind plug in there. There's a little bit of foam in there just to kind of hold this thing in. And when I do that, it gives me the ability to bind planes that aren't using the latest and greatest technology because we fly all the old stuff and new stuff. And what's gonna happen, you'll find, okay, so we're plugged in now and you'll see that it's charging. So that's pretty cool. So 2000 milliamp hours. So it's probably not gonna charge very long. What does it say? For best experience, please set up an account on Spectrum RC. So yeah, so you have to do that and then you'll set up the Spectrum RC account. They're gonna actually assign it to you so that they know um, basically what happens is you can get software updates and things like that uh, based on what your account privileges have turned on. And the other thing that's nice about that, but you do need to remember is when you sell this, if it's a used transmitter, you wanna sell it to your buddy, make sure that you deactivate your account so that they can then attach themselves to it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Otherwise you won't be able to update the firmware. Um, okay, so getting back to the point, that was a little bit of a four way into the excitement of RC and we're gonna be using that one on this brand new plane. Now, 
We'll use it for that, and then there'll probably be a clip as well at the end where we carry everything from the old one over. Maybe we'll go through a software update. I'm not sure if we have to do that or not. But the cool thing is they have Wi-Fi built in. So what is this gigantic box? I don't know. It's literally so big that I can hide behind it, and that is amazing. So for the record, this is gonna be the biggest box we've ever gotten from Horizon. Is it? I think so. And you guys already know what it is, but it's okay. I'm just gonna keep it exciting because <laughs> I am excited to see this. Honestly, I've been waiting on this plane for probably longer even still than the F-14, which just recently mm -hmm. came out, which is super cool. And I know you guys have been wanting one too, but check this thing out. Oh buddy, there's been all sorts of grumblings about this. Carbon Z T28, the Trojan. I am super excited for this. You may have noticed we've done a lot of uh, T28s lately. Uh, we do have some damage down here. This is one thing we do show on our channel is damage. It looks like this box may have been attacked by kamikazes a few <laughs> different times and from every side. Yes. And this tends to happen when you get gigantic boxes Huge. because if you find a UPS or a FedEx agent that does not want to throw it out the window of their truck, you know, to get back at you for having such a gigantic package, then you have a special agent and you should be happy with them. So anyway, we're just gonna pull this thing out. It is labeled as a skill level two. Camera crew, you're gonna have to help me. I'm sorry, okay. I'm trying. There you go, there you go. Okay, right. so what I was getting at earlier is we do show when we see damage and stuff like this because we want you to know what your experience is gonna be like. Now ours came from California, we're in Iowa, so normally this would be coming out of Illinois if you're in the Midwest because they have a distribution center in Illinois and then one in California. So it just depends on where you are in the country. This thing is so huge. <laughs> I can barely this see box you. is gigantic. <laughs> the, this box weighs more than the Draco by over two pounds. And the Draco was heavy. So anyway, uh, just looking at the end there, you can kind of see the finish level. We're in the bind and fly basic here, which just means that you bind it up to your own provided radio system that's in DSMX. And then uh, that's the protocol that's used. And then you provide your own battery. So super excited to see this. This does have LEDs. It has the thrust reverse. It's got all the avian smart stuff, big flaps, big retracts, fully redesigned. This is not just a rebrand from before. It's not just a new livery. This is a new release. It is based on the original one, but they changed a lot of things on it. It's not even the same foam design. So when they make new molds, they fix a lot of the issues that you may have experienced from yesteryear. And that being said, the Carbon Z T28 was one of the most popular models of all time. And yet what happens with big models is that they get sold and then everybody kind of buys what they want. And then these guys are stuck with like, oh my goodness, we have this gigantic box sitting here in our warehouse. So I'm just gonna tell you this now, and this is something we normally don't do, but I'm gonna do it because Horizon asked me to do it and I believe it's true. These boxes are huge. They're gonna order replacements. If you want one, you need to back order it, okay? Yeah. Here's why. These boxes are freaking huge, okay? So what's gonna happen, and this is true with Carbon Z Cub. It's an amazing, beautiful plane. One of my favorites, I have two. Carbon Z T28, Carbon Z, what am I trying to say? Carbon, Carbon Z. Z Cessna 150T. It's such a mouthful. Oh, yes. That one is another huge box. Yep. When you get huge boxes, they can't keep as many of them in stock because they take up about 14 spots of UMX planes or yeah. smaller 1.2 meter planes. You could probably have two to three in the same. You're gonna have to go to the middle so it doesn't break. There you go. Oh yeah. Wow. Look at this. I'm like taking up the whole room to <laughs> open the box. This is so cool. And so what I'm gonna say is you gotta back order it. If you yep. want one, back order it. Now, we don't wanna you know, give you guys the wrong impression, like they're not gonna be in stock or they're just gonna be a limited run. That's not what's happening. But I have to be honest with you, because the way that the, the economics of this particular model work out, and this is coming from Horizon, it is very hard for them to stock a lot of them. So what's gonna happen is there'll be a huge run on them 
and the first six months supply is already sold out, okay? So we are super lucky and it took some major work to try to get this thing so that we could get you guys a video ASAP. We have been, let's just put it this way. We've been working very hard to make sure we got a chance to review this because I was dying for this plane and now we've got one, which is so cool. And by the way, hey, kudos to freaking Horizon. It's not folded. I hate when people fold manuals and this is like not folded and it makes me so happy. And by the way, there are big uh, livery decal choices in there. Oh. There's a couple different choices, so it looks like. So getting back to the point. So if you don't order one right now, what's gonna happen is this. Not because it's a limited run, you may run the risk of being in the rounding error. Okay, now I'm not saying you're gonna be the rounding error. You should be able to order these for some time, but don't wait. If you think you want it, just order it, okay? Horizon is good to work with on back orders. It's one of the few companies I will recommend that you back order a plane from. Not every company is gonna get stuff in like Horizon does, but these are so huge that when they start seeing a taper off on the orders, they're gonna stop ordering them and they have to fill a whole container with these things. Huge prop, huge. This thing is gigantic. Oh my goodness. Yes, oh man. 14.75 by 10. That's a 10 inch purchase. That's crazy. So 10 inches every time. That's huge. That's crazy. So also 14.75. Now, that being said, there is a three bladed uh, master air screw um, prop. And I don't know if we'll end up linking to that for sure, but what'll happen is if you ever wanna see an option or an accessory that we talk about, 99% of the time you click on the plane in the video description below, that's where you can back order, or if it's in stock by the time you see this video, you can order it there for yourself. Uh, and, and one of the best values that you get with Horizon is that they cover ground shipping, which is huge when you get a big plane like yeah. this. I mean, you're talking like three figures cost for stuff like that, it's significant. So when you order it, you'll see there's other accessories down below. You can see spare parts and you can see upgrade parts. I'm hoping, that, and if they haven't already added them, I'll ask them to add the three blade prop because most of the T28s have three bladed props that you see in model form, but there are some T28s that actually genuinely fly on two bladed props. So just to be clear, because I griped about that when I realized there was only gonna be two blades on this, but then I was like, wait, hold on. So you're saying that the plane only had two in real life? They're like, yeah, this one did. So this particular style has the narrower nose like this, okay? Now that is a separation from the 1.2. The 1.2 has a bigger, more boxier nose. It's a different T28 design, okay? Still a Trojan, still gonna be a true to scale, but there's quite a few T28s out there. As a military trainer, it's been used for like decades, okay? And it's an amazing flying tricycle plane. So if you don't know anything about the history of T28, now these are, these are, those are not carbon fiber. Those are fiberglass, fiberglass and they're big. That's carbon fiber. You guys hear the difference? We always talk about this. We never have two. Dull. Twangy. Twangy. High pitched. Okay. So we're getting in guys. Oh, so excited for this. All right. The vegans. Look at this. This whole thing comes in half. Oh, it does. That's crazy. Okay, I don't even know if I can get that out yet. I, and when we do unbox builds radio setups, the biggest thing is we want to show you what kind of condition to expect a plane. Because remember, at the end of the day, even if this is shipping from an Illinois warehouse, wing joiner, okay? Looks like one of two, and then two of two, very big. Nice, perfect match mm -hmm. on the yellow, which we're going to point out later. This is an orangey yellow. It's not a fake yellowy yellow. We recently did a 1400 millimeter and ah, the yellow was definitely not this yellow. This one, it's this a one's the yellow. Bright. This yeah. Is like the dark this was like the darker orange yeah. yellow. Yeah. And I love yellow planes, yes. but I know some of you guys are going to complain that this doesn't have the navy, um, or I I can't remember is that the navy I think or the it's air the navy. force? Yeah, the navy uh, livery, which has the red wing tips. It's actually uh, like an international orange, I believe, is what it's called. And I love that that trim scheme too. It's so good. But yellow looks so good in the sky. And this thing is huge. It's going to look amazing. I cannot wait to see it flying. And by the way, our weather has been schizophrenic. We are literally like Neo in the Matrix 
weaving behind the Christmas storms and excuse me, the winter storms. And look at that. That wing is huge. <laughs> Holy shnikes. It's as big as the 1.4 meter fuse. Oh my goodness. That is freaking nuts. And by the way, that's a competitive brand there. Uh, still a good brand. We like the plane a lot, but that is huge. Look where, how deep it is. Where is this plane gonna live? <sighs> it's gonna live in my heart. <laughs> Already was before I got it. I know. Okay, so as you can see, huge embedded control hinges, really nice paint, a lot of mold release bumps. I'm surprised by that, but that might actually help with the, the airflow. I, I like this. This is like a walking path. They wouldn't actually usually put it on the flap though. It would be on the inboard portion right there, but I think this flat protrudes in a little further than the real life one. I love the way the stars and bars look. Mm -hmm. And then obviously they've done a good job of hiding the uh, lines with the exception of the red going out to the LED here, landing light and nav lights. Now these are day bright LEDs, which is good. Love the forward facing whites. Love that these are gonna be solid. Please be solid. Love the gear doors. Love it all. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And that's where your wing joiners are gonna go. Now that is the full to the center of the fuse, okay? So not to be mistaken, I'd say maybe a little bit misleading on that size comparison because you do have half of the fuse width in there too. True. Okay, so we're just gonna lay this okay. over here and just look how clean everything is. The mm -hmm. plastic matches perfect with the paint. Yep. This one here has got just a shade off, but it's really, really close. Okay, and then look, look at that. That's really good. That is a really good match, guys. Yeah. We don't see matches like that. 10 years ago, you were barely seeing a match at all. They were just gonna plop like them in their white. Color. Yeah. <laughs> so we are loving what these model companies are doing for us. And make no mistake, guys, there's a million easier ways to make a buck. So the companies that are doing this, they're not doing it because it's about making money. They're doing it because they love it or they would do other things to make money. So let's not punish them. Let's buy these amazing things that we scream for. And look at this. One, two, three embedded hinges, but really smooth. Look, it's, 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 it's just droops because it's, that's how smooth it is. That's going to be amazing. Okay, really big joiner here. Uh, it's got that cool shape to it. Let's see how good the fit is. Oh yeah, it's a nice tight fitment. That is really nice. Gonna keep the elevator lined up. Let's see what kind of strength we've got here in terms of the stability of the wing. Ooh, a little bit of a little bit of a bend there. Now I don't, oh, that's because that's where our spar ends. Okay. So yeah, that's where the spar ends, folks. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. So there's a spar that ends right there. Now, you may have noticed opaque yellow, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you are gonna say, but you can see through it. As far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing because that means that they didn't paint it so dang heavy that it's gonna be bogged down by paint. And make no mistake, you'll add pounds of weight to an airplane when they're this big. You will. If you don't believe me, try it. Maybe not pounds, maybe pound of weight. And that's a that's huge a amount of weight on an airplane this yeah. size, even this size, that's big. Um, okay, cool. So. Paint a small plane and try it if you don't believe me. I've done it and it makes, just doing, just doing, um, what's that stuff, polyacrylic. Yeah. We've done polyacrylic on the Airbus A330-600 and that thing got heavier. I mean, it, I mean it, was, it was worth it probably, but still. Probably not worth it on most planes. On most planes, probably not. But some people really, really want to keep them. Okay, so there's a huge cavity here. I'm just stuffing this extra foam in here. Okay. That vertical stabilizer is gigantic. Look at that. It's attacking me. <laughs> Get off. Look at this. Okay. That is beautiful. And then look at the servo. It's Holy an A500 cow. Metal Gear servo. Okay. So what is that, like a 30, 30 gram? I don't know how big like they are. like a 50. But then look at this. This is plastic. This whole thing is plastic here. Okay, serviceability, second to none, painted plastic that also happens to be yellow. That means they jigged it and painted it after they inserted this stuff, which is really nice. We don't always see that. I wish we did. There's some inferiorities on some of the other, uh, you know, competitive offerings, but I'm just gonna say this, the Carbon Z lineup, they spare no expense, they go all the way. And that's the way it should be when you're spending this kind of cash on a plane. 
But let's, let's just be honest, guys. This plane is gonna be sweet. And um, even if the electronics sucked, I still would love this plane. But the thing is, we're gonna have great electronics because this is all spectrum stuff, which means we're gonna have good thrust reverse. We're gonna have all the easiest setup and it's gonna be just absolutely fantastic. Okay. And these things, I don't know, they must spend as much designing the packaging as they do on the plane because yeah. these things come out of the box. Just oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so huge. Look at this. That's Look at that cow. Crazy. That is so beautiful. It's it looks like it's black. And then they, see this? This is black and then painted yellow. Wow. That is so gorgeous. So I don't know if they painted black and then they oversprayed here because you can see the, the tight yellow line. So pretty, but it's not like crazy heavy either. Feel it. Feel it? Oh wow. It's not bad. No. That is so cool. And we have one, two, countersunk screws, three. Okay. So I know we're getting really gushy over this plane and forgive me guys, I've been waiting a long time for this thing and I'm really excited about it. I didn't know about the Draco as long before I did about this. So we've known about this for a long time and we've been super excited and COVID really effed up the schedule on this one. As it did many other planes, by the way. So make no mistake, Horizon was, holy cow, that is a huge motor. Look at this. That thing is gigantic. It's an EFLM 1315 uh, 500 kV motor. So that one seems like it reminds me of the one that's in the Carbon Z cub and the carbon z cessna 150t mm. which by the way if you don't have those planes folks they're amazing planes if you're looking for something to tide you over while you wait for shipping on this thing that is freaking phenomenal look how huge that thing is god I love it so obviously a little bit more assembly when the planes are this big okay so don't be surprised it's just part of the deal when you get them to be this big uh, the assembly is easy though. It's still all screwed together as I understand it. And all screwed together is something that's kind of an industry new thing that we're just starting to realize how nice it is. Um, we do have some good foam glues finally. <laughs> and foam to foam I think is back in stock finally also. Ours is on the way. Oh yes. The other wing, okay, you've already seen it so I'm not gonna be mowing the issue. This one says Navy too, which is really nice and just absolutely gorgeous. This is about the ugliest part of the wing. We always seem to have one of those. That's probably where it actually feeds in for the injection mold. Mm. Okay, so as you can see, very nice fit. Kind of not pressed down, a little bit of bubbles here. If you get a bubble and you wanna take that out, you can use a pin to take that out or you can just work them out. I generally don't care. So, I mean, you're not gonna notice or care. This is a big plane. I mean, look at this, guys. This is crazy. I can't stress this enough. That's up to my waist, okay? So this thing's gonna be as tall as me and maybe just under because I'm 6'2", if you're selling me life insurance. <laughs> yeah. Okay, beautiful. Looks like we got spoilers there, but it's just the wing joiners. Okay, now the fuse. Oh, it's so beautiful. I can't wait to get this thing out. Look at this thing. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. And there's also a half and half. So basically I'm thinking what happened is they probably received delivery of the blanks and they would have received those in square packaging. So it was like cheaper to get that there. Cause remember guys, when you make something, you have to get the packaging there too. It's, it's part of production, you know? And I right. work in production environments. That's what I do for a living. And um, of course I do this too, but the thing is I work in industrial applications and I know what it's like in the plants because I work in a lot of plants and I've seen a lot of plants. And if you guys have never been in a plant, it's pretty cool. Those are some big, big screws. Holy cow. They look like, they look like machine bolts. Look at that. And of course we've got this beautiful height, height. Oh yeah. This might be the same as the one from the 1400 actually. It looks very similar. It's super, super high gloss too. Let's see it. Let's pull it out. Oh yeah. See, see the camera crew? Mm-hmm. That's so beautiful. And yes, that's threaded. So that's gonna go in there. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay guys, I really wanna be careful how this comes out and see we've got everything spread out. We've got a pretty big space here that we film in. And uh, I wanna make sure I have somewhere to lay this because it is huge. I'm gonna actually pop this off of here. Okay, here we go. 
Oh yeah, look at that thing. That wow. is so cool. Okay, so let's see if I can walk this guy out. Ow, I got shocked. Did you hear it? You're getting styrofoam on me from there. Really? It, like jumped. That's so weird. I'm all static though. Yeah. There it is, guys. Oh, this thing is not very heavy at all. I'm like getting tased over here. Do you hear it? <laughs> I can hear it. Oh my goodness. That pilot has gotten some overexposure to the sun. He has. He Look has at the canopy. Sunscreen. Okay, so now I'm gonna point out one thing. I wanna point out one thing. We just recently did another 1500 millimeter cockpit that looked way cooler than this. But I'm gonna say something about that, okay? It's called a trade off, guys. This weighs a lot less than that, okay? Now, is it totally cool on the one hand? Oh yeah. Is it totally unnecessary on the other hand? 100% you're never gonna know when you're flying, okay? Yeah. This thing has a huge canopy. That pilot can come out, watch this, watch this latch. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So beautiful. Oh and they painted the edges, they painted the edges. Oh yes, I'm so happy, the overlap, plastic overlaps. Mm. It smells new. Look, you can take that pilot out. See? Mm -hmm. Because that's uh, so far my least favorite thing. I actually kind of hate the pilot. Mm -hmm. But he has like a normal face. His eyes are symmetrical. Or wait, is that a his? Yes. I'm not sure. I'm not fine. so sure. It's not. Mm -hmm. But all I'm going to say is if there's something I'm going to hate on so far, mm -hmm. it's the pilot. But other than that, let's just keep enjoying how awesome this is. Look at this, guys. That's insane. I you can put, put both of my arms in there. inside of this. Well, do we do we have any that are that size? Not that small. Not anymore. Oh, okay. The cats that are that small. No, they'll scratch it. Oh, yeah, I don't put want that to happen. Worried about the plane, obviously. Of course. Yeah, it's so weird. This like safety warning came right off. Just they, gonna... they should make those stick better. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so big old piece. Okay, we got the air. 637TA, huge piece of Velcro. Could, what Lord, you gonna you're gonna use a car there? battery in here? <laughs> okay, we got the Avian ESC going up there. It actually looks like pretty basic and I don't care, that's perfect. perfect. Look at this though, Oh, got some bubbling there. Mm -hmm. That's not cool. That's so guys, here on Brian Phillips RC, we always point out the good, the bad, and the ugly. And sometimes we see ugly, sometimes we see ugly when we're looking at planes. And I'm just gonna say, we don't hide it because you know, you're gonna get it and you're gonna wanna know about it. And if that makes a difference for you, that pilot's not so bad, but could be better. You know, and that's one thing I've noticed. Why do we not have cooler pilots? I mean, how hard can it be to print pilots? I mean, we built this thing. I mean, they make dolls that are cool looking for kids. I know, they, you know, they can 112 scale models of every Marvel character that's ever existed. And I would have killed for that sort of thing when I was a kid. Okay, so open open landing gear on the nose. That's an A320B Metal Gear Servo. I think these are Metal Gear all throughout. There is a hole there to take something. Uh, probably the nose, nose cow, yeah. And then look at this, motor mount. Wow. Okay, it's plastic. Oh, I just wanna point out something, okay? What do we break when we crash? Motor mounts. Motor mounts? Wood motor mounts, landing gear. Cowling, landing gear. Okay, things are getting more serviceable. Yeah. You guys are doing a good job in the RC world, getting us some good serviceable stuff. Because really at the end of the day, most of us are gonna make a crash boo-boo once in a while. And that is one advantage you're gonna get with Horizon over some of the other companies is that there is a higher probability, probability you're gonna be able to get spare parts. Now, I'm gonna caveat that by saying, yes, there's times that stuff goes out of stock and there's nothing I can do about it. And it is disappointing. Um, but I'm gonna say this, they're one of the better ones. And let's look at piece count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that bag. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We got 15 pieces, not including the nut and bolt sack, okay? Which looks like just bolts. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty good for a huge plane, yeah. huge. So we're gonna pause. I'm gonna try to repack this so it's out of the way. We'll be right back. Okay, so we spread stuff out so that it would be easy to get to. And we have the motor, washer, and nut, okay? That stuff's gonna come off first. 
We're just gonna basically go through the assembly with you. That's the, usually kinda gets a little quicker into it, but we started with the radio today. So we'll lay that off the side. These ones are the ones that are gonna mount the actual motor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're gonna pass quite a long ways through and then reach inside to the motor mount. Okay. So we've got four of those and those run on a two millimeter. Three, those are three. Those are three, mm -hmm. sorry, three millimeters, okay. So we just kind of organized our goodies. That, that's not a three. I'm gonna say, that's, I knew that wasn't gonna fit. It's a two and a half. So we're just gonna get this vase thing. Two and a half. Two and a half, okay, great. All right, so I'll just sit so you guys can see easy. And you can see the down and right angle that this is gonna have on it when it's done. Now, do not use Loctite on this, okay? Just don't do it. There are nut zerts inside of here, and what's gonna happen is if you use Loctite on here, and they didn't say this in the manual, but they should. There's not nut zerts, okay. If you use Loctite, you're gonna make that brittle and it will break. The solvent that is the carrier in Loctite is gonna cause that to break, okay? Take my word for it, I'm 100% certain it will happen because I've done it multiple times. And I did it and then I eventually learned what I was doing wrong, okay? So reach up in here, you gotta get the leads out of your ESC, okay? And you're probably thinking to yourself, how am I gonna know which one goes to which? Well, on this particular model, it's not gonna be of great concern because it is a reversible thing. And we'll show you how to reverse it if you get it wrong, but chances are it's just gonna be a pretty straightforward thing. Now, if you really wanna figure out if it's going the right way, then there's other ways to do it, like putting a servo signal tester on there. Okay, there we go. But they did color them, but that doesn't mean that that's gonna necessarily be right. Okay, I've been duped by that before, but we are gonna go color for color. Now with uh, a brushless motor, of course this is a brushless motor, okay? So the electromagnetic coils are on the inside, and then on the stator, it's fixed magnets. So there's no touching components. Okay, that's what a brushless motor is. And if you're just coming back to the game and you're like, I, I want something big, you know, like what I was flying before, I was flying big balsa wood aircraft. And yes, you can still buy balsa wood aircraft, by the way. It's just uh, the foamies have taken over more of that area, okay? And that's probably a good thing because you can get a lot from a balsa wood plane for the cost of what it, excuse me, you can get a lot from a, a foamy that you would have to spend a fortune for in the balsa wood aircraft. See what I'm doing here? Show them the other side. See this? The Avian ESC is wanting to give me trouble. So I'm just gonna push that through and we'll deal with it in a minute. Okay, so now that that's up there, I wanna make sure that my wires aren't gonna be a, a factor. They're not gonna get caught on anything. It's not gonna be an issue later. I'm gonna be flying through the air and making my life better as I watch it. Okay. I'm gonna get this started. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna let go of it so it doesn't fall and hit me in the knee or the foot. Okay, so the second one, same thing here. I already feel purchase, very easy to get in, but that is a lot of thread. Yeah, it is. Makes me kind of nervous. It's countersunk directly at the bottom of these mounts, so it should be no problem. Do you want me to just go on the plane stand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, guys, it's not hard to do. You just gotta turn the screw a few times and it's gonna give you the perfect down and right angle as per the manufacturing the manufacturer's recommendation. If you do have a really loud screw like that and you wanna stop it from squeaking, you can lubricate the tip of your screw with either some dry wax-based um, soap, like, you know, just soap from your bathtub or whatever, or you can use like a little Dawn dish soap or a uh, dish detergent or a pump hand soap, and that stuff will help it to slide in. But it's not gonna compromise the integrity of your plastic. And no, you don't need Loctite on this. Some of you guys are gonna think you do. If you decide to use Loctite, just remember what I told you is gonna happen. This thing's gonna get brittle, it's gonna break, your motor's gonna fly out in a, in a hilarious and epic failure. Usually we have to earn it, and by the way, you see what I just did there? I just stabbed that. It's not gonna matter, it's gonna be covered up, but still don't do that. 
Very easy so far, absolutely no problems on the assembly other than getting the Avian ESC. The extra line in there was giving me a little bit of trouble. So we may have to pull the excess to get the Avian back into the opening where it's at. But honestly, I'd kind of like to have it out. It's gonna be better for air cooling myself. And plus then you got a little longer line for your battery. Now, they do recommend a 6S 5000 30C. That's right, 30C. It's not like you're gonna need some super high C rating pack for this, but you can use the 30C, you can use the 50C, or you can use the 100C. Um, if you don't know anything about the C, the C just speaks to how fast it can discharge into the ESC. It also speaks really to how fast it can be charged as well, but it's got a different rating for that. So, okay, got the motor on there now. I'm coming up here. Okay. Okay, so we'll just set this sideways because it's kind of got a, you know, like a weird edge on the bottom. And this Robart stand is probably at its extent. That's about as big <laughs> as you can do. Okay, so now the next move for us is to put on the cowl, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty obvious where this goes. One, two, and three screw holes, and you're gonna line up the black with the black and it's all keyed. See, the shape is keyed. It's only gonna go one way. Now this is a fake vent. It doesn't actually go to anything, okay? But then this is a real vent and that does go to the motor. So that's pretty sweet. And I know some of you guys are thinking, do a nitro, do a glow, do some sort of a gasser. You know, this plane's so big, somebody could do that. That'd be cool. But I'm not telling you how to do it because I'm not an expert in that arena at all. Okay, let's talk about screws. Piles, we're getting the small ones, guys. There's mm -hmm. three Phillips screws there, okay? So we're gonna put away the 2.5. We never were gonna need that three anyway, I don't think. And then we'll grab, eh, we'll grab the short China screwdriver. This is a Phillips, okay? We're gonna take these screws and we're just gonna run them in. Now these are just like a self-tapper sort of like wood screw style, plastic screw style and the penetration is gonna be pre-drilled. So you don't, have to, you don't have to work too hard, but just make sure you hit the hole if you can, and that'll help suck the, uh, the cowl into the right position. But as you can see, mine went in at a bit of an angle, but it actually went perfect, so I'm not too worried about it. Now I'm gonna flip this up on its side, and I'm gonna try to get a little better alignment. I'm having to push mine in, and I'm feeling like maybe a little extra foam right here. Rather than cut it out, I'm gonna press it. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my screwdriver and make sure it's lined. Cause I didn't like the way that first one went in. See, this one's kind of doing the same thing. It's going at a bit of an angle. See how it's going up at an angle? That's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. I'm not left-handed, so this side's always awkward. Cause I'm literally, there's not a good way to stand on this side when you're right-handed and opposite if you're left-handed on that side. Okay, so it goes in like that. We're gonna flip it upside down. Again, guys, these are pretty simple steps, pretty basic things. If you're new to the channel here on Brian Phillips RC, we review the latest and greatest stuff, as much of it as we can get our hands on. We help you guys to see whether or not it's good. You get to make up your own mind. You can buy it from the links, you help support us. It's kind of the huge way to help us. If you don't want to buy this plane or maybe you don't have space for this plane, you don't have the budget for this plane, whatever it is, you're not ready for this plane, but you do want to help us, there's tons more planes down below. And then if you haven't found what you want down below, you can go to brianphillipsrc.com, which is our domain. Of course, it's spelled exactly the same, Brian Phillips, B-R-I-A-N, Brian Phillips. No Y. See this, guys? Look at this. The clearance is really tight here, okay? So I want to keep an eye on that but it's got a really good clearance here. So that's gonna be good for ventilation, but this one's real tight. Okay, otherwise the cow's on, pretty simple stuff. And yeah, I mean, some of these steps are gonna be pretty basic. You probably don't need a lot of help putting on a cow. But at the same time, if you're just getting back into the hobby and you wanna see just how easy it is to build one of these, Brian Phillips RC is here for you. We're gonna show you just how easy it is. And look at this, or hard, if it's terrible, <laughs> okay? And yes, we do a few planes. They are terrible texture to texture. Helps get good bite, okay. Washer, obviously that little taper, it's gonna go like that. Pretty simple stuff, it goes on there. And then a jam nut, meaning it's thin instead of being a thicker depth to it. So it's a jam nut is what we call that. 
Okay, I'm using a crescent wrench. You can use whatever you want. This is what I'm using, okay? I think they said it was 16 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am holding the blade. It is sharp, so don't get cut here. And also, if you wanna wait and put the prop on later, be my guest, do what makes you feel safe, okay? We're gonna be doing setup with the prop on live. This is a big prop. If you get cut by this, it's not gonna be a fun thing, okay? You're gonna be going to the hospital for sure. It's gonna be expensive and painful. So don't get cut, be careful, please, okay? There's two areas where people get hurt in this hobby. It's with props and it's with batteries, okay? Pretty much all the rest of it is just such a minor rounding error that it doesn't even happen hardly ever. But I'm gonna tell you this, people do get cut and they get cut pretty bad. And uh, when you uh, set up a plane that's a bind and fly or a plug and fly, the biggest thing is to know that you can trust the electronics. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get it all set up and you're gonna make sure that you control the plane. So we'll show you how to do that so you can stay safe. But if you're uncomfortable, leave the prop off. Okay, continuing onward. And it's not a big deal. It takes just a few minutes, but for the sake of the video, we usually do it this way. All right, long tail section. Okay, we're doing the vertical stabilizer and the rudder now. And I'm just gonna turn this like that. Okay. All right, so we've got an elevator plug and we've got the rudder plug is kind of taped down here. So go ahead and unplug this. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with uh, the current uh, color codes and things like that, if you're like, hey, I remember white, black, and red. Well, they still have Futaba color schemes out there. And this would be what I'd call the Hextronics JR color scheme. Uh, so it's brown is your ground, red is your, is your uh, power source, your plus voltage. And I don't say plus 12 volts or anything like that because the BEC voltage can be different. And then of course the signal is yellow. If it was Futaba, it'd be white for signal, red for plus voltage, and then brown would be black, okay? But it's, it's basically, the same. if you were colorblind, they'd look the same, okay? Think about it like that. If, sure. if I was colorblind, what would it look like? Okay, so we have two holes here, and then we have one more hole down there, okay? So that one hole comes up from the bottom, okay? Yeah, and you're gonna so have you a can... second one in the back. Oh yeah, one, two, and then these actually hold the tail feathers on. Okay. So camera crew is going to help me for just a moment. She's going to hold this like that. And I'm going to show you camera crew is going to point and I've got the elevator plug. It's labeled right here. Yellow is up. Now you don't have to have a helper for this, but it does make it a lot quicker. And she's got a camera in her hand. So she's kind of like half of a person <laughs> when it comes to helping like that. Okay. So it's clipped in there. And that's missed. That's mold. that is that is elevator. Well, that one, so that's the rudder though. Oh yeah, that's not the elevator. Okay, so we got another problem. So that's a rudder. Now you can tell because it goes right down this channel. Yeah. You can also tell that this one's the elevator and it goes over to where the elevator will be and that's pretty obvious. Now there's only one linkage you have to put on and that's to the elevator and we'll show you that later too. Okay, so the rudder, that's why I was confused. I was just sitting there reading while you were saying that out loud. Okay, so now I've got the brown is down. I know it's hard for you guys to see. I need to push that back just a little bit. Okay. So brown is down, brown is away from me. It's away from my belly, it's away from my chest. Okay, so just think about that as you're plugging them in. Brown to brown. Now, you also, these are keyed, okay? But you can force them in if you really are strong enough, which most of us are strong enough, okay? Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stuff the excess up into the cavity here. And I'm gonna make sure it gets out of the way of that thing. You see that? That's the hole. Mm. You need to make sure that gets clear. So as I push this down and I push those leads forward, I also have to get this. There we go. So it's going in. You can also go up front and pull them in. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm pushing this in first because it goes into a pocket here. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide it forward. Now, I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna grab my link leads from inside. It's so big, I have my hand halfway down the plate. That's so cool. Okay, I'm just kinda trying to pull on them so I can pull the excess forward. Yep, and I've got them and I pulled them forward. And I got the other one and I'm just pulling it forward. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna guarantee me that my hole is clear, okay? Because there's nothing worse than sticking it in the hole and realizing there's something else already in there. And you're like, what just happened? 
You'll have to talk to RC Sparks for that one. <laughs> Wait, this is a new release. We can't say jokes like that. Okay, you see this here? That's tight now. I also noticed that that paint from this angle looks like a bad match, but then from that angle, it looks like it's a close match. That's so weird. Okay, so now down we go. So you know, on Brian Phillips RC, one of the things we like to do is point out little gripes we have. At the end of the day, we love these planes. We love what the manufacturers are doing. And we're pretty happy with like pretty much all of them, except for, you know, it's always disgusting to us. And so we pretty much gave up on them. Yeah. Um, we had way too many problems and it was like so bad to build those things. Okay, so we've got some huge screws. I Look at this. Together. Yeah. Huge and short. And then really short, okay? These ones are gonna be driven all by the same size, which is gonna be 1.5 or two? It should be a two now. That's a two, yep. two millimeters. Okay, so you know where these go, camera crew. The long goes here. Yep. Okay, now why did I grab the other short ones? They go know, for the tail feathers. Yeah. We'll just lay them right there, guys. By the way, if you ever noticed our counter in our videos, yeah. it makes everything blend in, it okay? Does. That's why I picked it, just for you. Actually, no, I picked this. And you probably, you wanted to have quartz out here. No, I wanted a slightly whiter granite that has like the little burgundy purpley, oh. more of the like oh, purpley yeah, flex. you did. We wanted to get granite out here because we were afraid that we would end up putting a hot pan yep. on the quartz. quartz and then burning it because you can burn quartz. We have quartz in our bathrooms, but we wanted, and I wanted warm out here because it's yeah, all white and It's white and gray. it's actually not white. What color is that? Oh, you, People uh, ask. Alpaca. Alpaca. That's right. Sherwin-Williams, alpaca. Mm -hmm. And then our bedrooms, we did Sherwin-Williams. Sea salt. Sea salt. And you guys are like, why the heck are you talking about the color of paint you use? Because people ask these <laughs> things. People ask. And it's like hard for us to remember. So I was like, can I just really quiz? And then what color is the white? Origami the white. Origami. That's right. Which is the same origami we used on the outside. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I know you guys were really worried about it. I was going to show them the moon. It's like a little teeny tiny sliver. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Do I need to shut the lights off to no, see it? No, it's okay. I can't get these screws to go, so I think that the wing is not all the way in. Okay, so I'm pushing down, and I'm not liking this step, okay? Because look at this. i got to put my thumb. Where? <laughs> oh, I'm going to put my hole? thumb. I'm going to put my thumb in his butt. <laughs> I'm going to push as hard as I can. And I'm gonna sneak up on it. I'm gonna put my thumb so in his butthole. <laughs> uh, okay, dang it, that's strike number two. Change we're gonna get fired. Tech. Okay, so for those of you new to Brian Phillips RC, we're supposed to behave on new releases. And we, we always behave. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm Sometimes. always good. Don't over tighten. You guys wanna see what over tightens looks like? You wanna show this instead of cleaning up the foam? See this, as I tighten, you see the pucker marks? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's over tightening, okay? But you want it to close the seam here, okay? So now that seam's open, right? Watch this, watch this. I'm sneak up on it. You're making me nervous. Why? I don't know, just like push it off the end. Hold on, let me trade sides. I'm right-handed after okay, all. Okay, that's true. Okay, see this? Oh yeah, look at the seam. Show them the seam mm -hmm. as I turn the screw. Is it getting there? Mm, maybe. You see this? Pucker, puckerage. Oh, yes. Okay, good enough. Okay. okay, guys. Now, one tip on huge planes. If you have a huge plane and you tighten that and it starts to pucker, just leave it be, give it a couple of days, maybe come back, tighten them. Just saying, sometimes it helps. You would. Way to go. <laughs> if you guys ever want, <laughs> if you ever want to trigger dropping screws, just put it on film. Just record yourself doing That's this. That's right. If you record yourself doing anything, you're sure to drop whatever mm -hmm. you wouldn't have dropped yep. otherwise. Okay, so now, uh, because these wings are gigantic, we're gonna definitely do that last. And by the way, show the people at straight of an arrow. I know. That is so phenomenal, I love it. Now, that being said, we've been seeing that from other planes. It's not anything new, but this has some girth to it, okay? Girth with penetration. Just perfect match. Okay, speaking of penetration. Mm -hmm. I was afraid you were gonna forget that one. That's why I put them together. 
I'm gonna penetrate this thing right now. Would you help me penetrate it? Sure. Okay. Oof. Yes. See? That's it. You can tell when it's all the way yep. in. And then this is how you can also tell. If you're in doubt, stick it in from both sides. Yeah, buddy. That's good. Okay. So there we go. Look at that. Look how perfect it is. Perfect. It's perfect. Okay. So now we need to obviously pull that apart so we can put it actually through. And then how do you tell which way's up and down? Pretty not obvious on this plane. That is true. Because of the control horn. Yep. That's the only way it can go down. Okay. So I'm currently holding. Let's just get this apart not screw something up. I'm currently holding this side. It's mm -hmm. going to go through the hole. True to hole. I'm going to stick it right through it. Hey, can you hold that with your hand since mm -hmm. you're like right there? You could stick your thumb in the hole. No, it's okay. I'll leave that for you. Okay. I enjoyed it myself. All right, right here. See this? Look at this. We're going to stick this in here. You see how it's like, it's going to crush that. Okay. So I'm going to teach you guys a secret. This is the secret. What you want to do is just wiggle it a little, wiggle it. See how it's walking that down? Wiggle it, wiggle it. See how it's wiggling in? Now watch what I'm doing out here. You see this tip? If you press right here, you're going to have a huge ridge and bump. It's going to be super ugly. I'm going to walk it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. In as much surface area as you can do, spread that weight all the way across the palm of your hand. Okay. Back and forth. So now I'm going to take this screw and you're like, you're going to screw it already. You didn't even have the other side on. That's right. Now there's a rhyme. There's a rhyme to my reason. Okay. You want to know why I did that? Cause I'm going to pull that rod out and I might get the other one in so I can wiggle it. And then I'm going to put the rod back in. You know why? Really? So I don't end up with exposed white here. It's going to look like crap if it is. It's painted. No, but when you stick that into that tight hole, if you, if you ram this into a tight hole and it scripts, scripts off the paint, if it scripts the paint off, well, you don't want to script the paint off. Okay. I'm just saying, I mean, I gotta, I'll remember the rod. It's your plane. Okay. I did not get that screw tightened all the way either. You I did just, not. I don't want to be scraping the paint. Oh yeah. There, don't you know. Okay, now we're gonna stick this in. And yes, I have to pull it out. Everybody remember that, okay? Ready? Don't you know, get in there. See how I did that? Now I don't have to worry about that. I can just worry about getting the rod in, getting a good penetration. Don't you know, look what happened on the back. You see it? I done ripped the paint, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna stick it in like this first now. And all I'm doing is just wearing down the, the entry point. Oh yeah. It sucks to be right sometimes. See, there we go. I'm just going to work it. Okay. Now I'm going to pull it out. Okay. Now I'm going to go right back with the rod. Oh yeah. Can you go that side first? Yeah, because it's easier. There is totally a second hole there. It looks like at one point they must've designed it for a second one. And then they were like, yeah, we're good with one. Okay. Oh, yep. I'm going to put that back across the other side so that I get proper penetration, guys. A lot of penetration on this plane. You got to take your time and stick it where it needs to be. Okay. There it is. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to slide it on the end. And now we've already knocked the edge down. So I'm going to take and rub off that little bit of paint. See, that's fighting me. Ooh, that's scary. I do not want that to show. That would be a mess. Okay. You see what's happening on the back? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that son of a gun. That son of a gun. Camera crew, push. Carefully. You did not push at all. I'm not pushing. I can't push hard enough. Okay, push harder. You're not pushing. You need to push straight. There it goes. Look guys, we got the paint in. Yes. Okay. Now I am super, okay. Show them on the, on the backside there. I'm gonna get my X-Acto knife and fix that right now. You see what's going on? On which, on this side? This is such a minor detail guys, but I just want you to see what I'm fighting. You see this right here? Watch this. I'm gonna cut that right there. 
I'm gonna drop that paint off, okay? Why do I care? Because I don't want a white spot there because you might see that, okay? Now I'm gonna hold here, surface area, okay? The whole palm of my hand is going on there. Oh yeah, get in there. Now I'm gonna go over here for maximum surface area. Oh yeah, we've got lightning. All right, so now we are not lined up here yet though. That's part of the problem. There it is. Now it's gonna go. Yeah, buddy. There it is. Make sure your elevator is lined. That's gonna help. Whew. Okay, so that was not as easy as I wanted it to be. And I'm gonna take this X-Acto knife and I'm gonna just score that paint and let it fall right off, which it did, okay? So we got good connection between the left and the right sides, but we do have a little bit of paint that came off. You see it on the floor? That's right. It's not a lot, but it's enough that it made me nervous because I didn't want to see that. Okay, so now we take the screw and we put it in the hole. And some of you guys are probably thinking, geez, Brian, you're overthinking this. Don't worry, you haven't seen a thing yet. I mean, overthinks everything, it's okay. Yeah, this is normal. That's why you're here. Okay, oh, that went in really nice. Mm -hmm. Like, no problem. Okay, now we're getting to the problem point where it's like a little harder. Put a, a, put a hand on it. Okay. There you go. Why does it always move when you put a hand on it? Actually, watch out. I want to trade you sides. Trade you sides. I'm going to put this up here. It's just getting to be pretty heavy I know. up front. Yeah. Now I can put my arm on it. Okay. See, I'm right-handed. But you see, it's getting hard to turn in. There was not shorter ones, right? No. Okay. Those were the correct ones. Man, that's a lot of penetration. Well. So if you guys are doing this with a drill, I just wanna caution you that when you do it with a drill, you will heat up the screw a lot in your nut zert, okay? So just be sparing. If you're using an impact, be careful the first few times. You may wanna put a little pump of, of uh, like show them like soap. Yeah, just like okay? this kind of soap. Because what's gonna happen is if you get it too hot, the nut zert might spin and that would ruin it. Okay, so yeah. don't do that. I hate when my nut zert spins. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten this all the way down. Goodness gracious. Those last couple turns are really hard, folks. I can tell. I'm like actually working at it. I got kind of a death grip and uh, it's just like, there it is guys, we're there. Okay, so now the other side, and it doesn't help when you have a small screwdriver to do that with. The thing that's nice about this, you can put that in a chuck and they're pretty sturdy, but they don't always break. They don't always break. <laughs> I'm just, just getting usually. a little bit excited here. Yeah. Usually about the time I get excited, I screw something up. That is really hard to turn in. I'm gonna see if I can push this in a little bit more. Nope. Okay, so we'll pause while I tighten this because it's just frustrating to do. Okay, so I got this screwed in. Uh, full disclosure, I had some hard time doing it, so I took a drill and I put it into an adapter, into another adapter, and I pulled it out, put some dish, dishwasher soap on it, and put it back in. So we're good now. The other one was way easier. I don't know why that one was so hard, but it went straight in. We weren't searching for the hole like we've had with other planes but it still just was really hard because it's so stiff. Tight. I'm okay with stiff as long as it goes in. And I was like afraid I was gonna break my tool. So anyway, all right, getting back to the point. So the next step is of course, look how beautiful it is. And then secondly, we're gonna put the wing on. We do have one step left on the elevator here, but just for the sake of posterity, we're gonna wait on that because we have to set up the radio first and so we'll basically do that. Now, real quick while we're talking about it, there is a bind plug included with this plane, uh, but we don't need it because we're gonna use the button to bind. So I'm just gonna lay that in my bag of goodies. And then we also had the camera crew also got these decals out. So these decals are gonna be put on by you, unless you wanna do different squadron markings, okay? Now, the cool thing about this plane is they show you on the box where to put them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we might take a quick second while it's easier to do it because the wings aren't installed yet. The wings make this thing huge, huge. True. So we're gonna do this first. So, 775, 
Are you going to go where? The, you're doing the little see. ones first? Yeah, I'm just doing whatever is in my hand right now first. Okay. So guys, we don't normally spend a lot of time on decals. Uh, so forgive us if we do this faster than you might. Okay. So it looks pretty good. I think that might have actually supposed to be back just a hair further, but that's all right. Really high quality decals, near perfect match on color, mm -hmm. which is what we like. We have come to expect that from planes. Um, I'm using this line to line up my numbers just because it's super easy. There's a vertical line there and then that makes it easy to get a good alignment okay so now this needs to go opposite the stars and bars so it goes on that wing so just walk around and by the way we're on a counter we were talking about counters earlier and this counter is like a whole piece of granite so when you order granite you get them in whatever however big they are did they cut this down width wise i can't remember it's it's 10 feet long and four feet wide yeah so it's like basically a whole piece and so when we got it it was like it was super cool because like one day I came home and um, the kids had marked the thing. Well, actually, cam crew did that. No, our two-year-old at the time oh, yeah. found a box of food coloring. Yeah, like on the we bottom shelf because that's where we put our food coloring at this house. It was, this I is didn't back think when we had could get the lid off, yeah. So we he, had just moved. We had just moved. He opened up the box of blue food coloring and he was spilling it on our bench over there. So I picked up the box and threw it towards the sink, but I it missed somewhere and it here. landed somewhere in there. Yeah, so anyway, so we had to try to fix that. And uh, okay, so the rescue is on that side. And it goes about here. Right in front Looks of Looks like the maybe, line. yeah, like right yep. there, okay. So anyway, long story short, I came home, I was super thrilled. You know, because this was like a multi-thousand dollar piece of stone that can't be returned, obviously, and has to be installed by a professional because we don't have the glues and the tools to do that crap. And so I was like super, super happy that day. Well, anyway, turns out you want to know how to fix that. What you do is you get your, your granite guy out and then he spends like three weeks doing all sorts of things and it doesn't come off. And then what do you do? You get a marker that's brown and you stain over the top of it and you'll never know it's Make there. it look slightly so less. So if you happen colored. to have a natural colored stone, you can cover it up. Now this goes over here um, or on the other side, but in this case it goes here, but it looks like, hmm, this you... one, no, this one goes first and that'll set my spacing for the other one. Okay. Because yeah, I was thinking the same thing, but I don't want to get stuck with our shorts down. So we're going to do this one first. And okay. it looks like we just have like maybe a finger width spacing here. It'd be kind of cool if there were some more distinct eliminators for doing these, but that would be pretty ridiculous. Like if they had it jigged into their paint, jig, mm. like a little dot or something. Because when they're somewhat ambiguous like this, I want them to be right. I think I'm gonna just go right there. You see how I, I picked that vertical line for the inside of that. And I wanna make sure this is straight down the length. And so I'm going by this curvature because it is a little bit of a curvature. And then I like to take a, a thumbnail or a fingernail and just press it into the seams. And that's part of the reason why I avoid going over seams because sometimes I do that with my fingernail and then I like damage the foam and it always irritates me. Okay, now also I just wanted to point out the squadron, uh, the CZ, hmm, sort of torn on that. A little bit torn on that. Why are you torn? Because CZ, carbon Z, I mean carbon Z, it is a thing. So we're gonna do that, I guess. So now we can line this up on the other side. Excuse our gross water tray for the cats. I didn't show them the gross water tray. I don't know why you didn't. <laughs> I was avoiding it. Okay. You're not proud of that? I am not. Okay. All Actually, right, our cats go. love it, it's just gross. Yeah, and it drips, drip, drip, yes. drip. Drip, it's even nice when you fill clean. it, it's so annoying. But the cats love it. And we have two of them. Doesn't your sister give us one? Yeah, well, this. we don't use both of them. Well, we used to have one outside, and then we were like, yeah, I don't want to give the raccoons yeah, nice water. Yeah, the raccoons don't need nice water. Yeah, they can go drink the pond water yeah. with the rest of the vermin. Okay, so same thing here. We're going to use this vertical line, and we're going to bring it down. I want to make sure I get the spacing right. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's about an inch down from the top. Is that line in the same spot? 
Mm. Yeah, it is. Maybe. There we go. So there's that. Oh yeah. So folks, if you haven't figured out, I do love these airplanes. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And uh, you know, I'm it, of things. Of course, I love my family, but uh, I love airplanes <laughs> and I love aviation stuff. We're on the list if, somewhere. Yeah, they're on the list for sure. But the thing is, if you haven't figured that out from watching these videos yet, I do. And my camera crew, she loves me. Okay, so does this go this way or does this go over here? It looks like the no. lightning bolt goes that way. Yep, so lightning that bolt goes always way. goes toward the front. Okay, so just, we have to make a decision. I think I'm gonna just place this right here. Yep. Okay, so you see I've kinda, you know, squarenessly put it there. Squarenessly. Squarenessly. That is definitely correct definitely terminology. Okay, so you see where I did that? Mm -hmm. So between here and here. So I favored this spot and that spot. Okay. okay. All right, so now we're gonna squarely, squarenessly put it over here too. Okay. These decals didn't quite get cut all the way. You see that? It's not bad. We've had a lot worse, but it's not perfect either. Oh, please work. Please be squarenessly. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, that was good. Oh, by the way, what we're charging right now is 7,000 6S 30C packs. We haven't used those for some time because it's been really cold and crappy. We've been dodging like Neo and the Matrix, the winter storms. We haven't been. And I think the rest of the country was hitting this last storm. Okay, so we have the decals except for the, where are those? The tail? Yeah. I swear they oh, were just they're on here. the table. You moved them. I was going to say, what the heck is <laughs> going like, on here? Okay, so we have these things. The tail makes me a little bit nervous because it's huge. And it looks like theirs goes past the rudder movement. So normally when it goes past the rudder movement, they actually tell us how to handle that. But they didn't on these. Ugh, that's kind of scary. Same? I do not know. <laughs> I they hope they are. The it's yeah, they look similar, but you know, is there an up and a down? That's a good question for the people that made this. People that made this, is there an up and a down? I think the answer to your question is maybe. Guess and check. Mm -hmm. That's why you watch Brian Phillips RC. So this is the one that's closest to the cut point. Ooh, this one's gonna be kind of awkward. It is. Oof. I am noivous. I think I'm gonna just, oh no. I think you're just gonna have to commit. I'm just gonna have to commit. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, you see what I'm doing? I'm going like three fifths of the way down. Three fifths of the way, no. I'm gonna just stick it. See, I just stuck it. Okay. I'm gonna go right, right there. Okay, now. Couple different ways that you can do this over a moving surface, okay? I prefer to center the surface, okay? So it's centered. If it's like a flat surface without a gap, it's, it's even simpler, because then you center the surface and it just goes right across. But in this case, you have to pay attention a little bit here. See how I'm hitting? If I would've gone up just a hair, that would've worked out a lot better because I wouldn't be on this weird bump, okay? But I'm just gonna go straight across. And guess what? I'm not even gonna cut it yet. I'm just gonna leave it. And then I'm gonna put the other one on. Because my primary objective right now is to match them up so that they look the same. Because the same is gonna be helpful here. Okay. If you don't have symmetry on this, it's gonna look weird. Well, luckily you technically can't see them both at the same time. At the same time? That's true. That is a good point. We'll show them both sides though very quickly so they can tell if it's wrong. Hey, you're blocking my view. Thank you. I'm looking at that as a reference, folks. Okay, so now on both sides of the plane, I am gonna have my arrow pointing right at this spot. Okay, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. And now that I've, and I am actually over the seam right there. There's a panel line. I'm just gonna lay it down. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. See what I ran into, guys? Don't do it like me. You need to go in a different spot. You see what I did? There's this control horn here. 
Oh. And you know what? If you try to peel this off at this point, you're pretty much gonna screw yourself over. So yeah. just commit and that's where it's going, guys. And it'll be fine. Nobody will ever know any better unless you put it on the internet for the world to see. And then they'll know. Okay, so I'm gonna grab an X-Acto knife and scissors. One of them should do the trick. I don't know which one, to be honest. Um, X-Acto knife's nice, but sometimes they don't cut as clean as you think because these things are vinyls. They're really, they're thick and strong. I'm gonna see if I can walk this. Nah, I'm not gonna be able to walk it. I'm just gonna press it down. I'm just gonna commit. Can they even see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Why are you filming from underneath? So I can see. I won't be able to see behind you, around you this way. Okay, the camera crew and I are having a dispute over where, where it can be seen. Okay, see this? She does usually know pretty much what's going on. And I think I know what's going on. See this, guys? Watch us. I'm gonna cut on this edge. I'm just gonna go like real slow. This is a fairly new blade, by the way. Please don't be into the paint, and I think I am. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. You see what I was trying not to do? I was trying not to get that weird walk. Yep, got into the paint. That's all right. Nobody's ever gonna know except for all 17 of you that watch this video. <laughs> so if you're one of the 17 people that are watching our video, we appreciate you being here with us if you wanna help support us buy these planes from the links and like we said at the early portions of this video this is one of those planes don't wait order it if you want it because what's going to happen is they're going to do a another couple of runs and they're going to protect themselves from being stuck with a bunch of big boxes as things slow down now that being said they want you to be able to order them it's just really hard with such a big size they don't want to sit on a lot of them so if you're thinking about getting this and you do want it, and by the way, I know you want it already, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just pre-order this one. It's not something you always have to do. And some of you guys are already in the habit of pre-ordering everything you like. We appreciate, I've gotta block you, I'm sorry. Right. You can move the camera to see maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. But we try not to, persuade you in that way because we don't think it's necessarily always the right, right move. It's not always right for everybody, okay? But in this case, if you want this plane, you're gonna have to probably move on it or you're gonna be waiting a long time. And that's the scary part is everybody that wants this, you don't wanna wait until like next fall. Yeah. Okay. So by the way, the first shipments I believe are already sold out, which kind of everybody already knows. And so we had to wait, which was painful. I do not want that to fall on my bare foot. I scooched it forward. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. I mean, camera crew. I just don't know where the people that don't want to go. I can't believe you would call me anything other than camera crew. I know, it's so weird. Jeez. It's like we've been married for almost two decades. <laughs> we are old. Mm -hmm. In case that wasn't already clear, folks. I think that was pretty obvious. There's people that are older, though. That's true. The uh, RC forefathers. Okay, folks. And if you're one of the RC forefathers, just getting back to the hobby, and uh, you're enjoying this content, and you kind of like that long format feel and you're like you know you're sick and tired of these little five second clips of like people opening and closing the retracts which is just annoying it's like a tedious little like hey look they open they close amazing if you want something a little deeper than that you're at the right channel we're gonna give you something deep like the penetration of our rods and screws mm -hmm. with a straight face because it was totally Totally appropriate. Of course. See this this paint, guys? Huge mistake right here. I can't believe I did it, and I know mistakes. This one was one of the biggest. I'm gonna cut that off. It's gonna fall. Good thing is, since that's white, it's gonna blend. And and by the way, I'm just gonna point out this. Let's just call it what it is. This is probably arguably a mistake. I feel like if we would have walked that back, we would have had better results. I'm disappointed in myself for that. But again, it's not gonna be that big of a noticeable thing. And I also didn't get them quite as even as I was hoping because I, I went over, I went over by like the same amount and look at the difference. 
Like I really don't understand. It's almost like, see this? I overlap by like an eighth of an inch and yet I only went past. I think you went less on this side. I can't tell if it's an, I can't tell if this is equidistant. I think it is, but look at that. That's true. I don't know. It's so weird because I feel like the angle here mm -hmm. is about the same. So maybe there is a top and a bottom. I don't know. Either way, guys, it's gonna look fine. You're never gonna notice. You're gonna see this beautiful thing flying through this. So this is the only one that I'm kind of, you know, a little bit. I mean, you don't have to put it on. Where I mean, it's supposed to go? the carbon Z cub. I mean, it is a carbon Z. It is the carbon Z. It's also not a cub, right? So folks, I'm gonna take one for the team on this. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I can't put mine up there. It doesn't fit, I have to put it back here. See, there you go. Well, that's kind of cool too. You mean cooler? <clears throat> yes, of course. Obviously, bias. You're the coolest. <sighs> this build has actually gone pretty, pretty quick for being a huge plane, huge plane. So we appreciate you guys watching through these long videos. If you're bored and we've put you to sleep, you're welcome. I know it's hard to fall asleep, so obviously <laughs> if you have uh, sleep issues, you're at the right place. Brian Phillips RC will put you to sleep, we promise. And for those of you behind bars watching our videos, we always bring this up. We wanna thank you for being loyal supporters. <laughs> Don't forget to bribe your prison guards so that you can get these things past the front door. Although I would definitely say these ones are not gonna fit in the cavity. Probably not. So picks them a little smaller. In the shiv cavity. <laughs> you may need to actually bribe them more with this. I don't know if you're gonna be flying this one in the prison yard. But that being said, if you're new to Brian Phillips RC and you don't realize that we have literally thousand and three quarters, thousands, do we have thousands yet? We gotta be getting We gotta be pushing close. close. You know, it's funny because YouTube, you know, they'll give us like analytics on everything. But they're like, you know, uh, we, we don't know how many videos you yeah. have. Like, that's it's the one just thing. We just look a lot. Yeah. Once you get past a certain point, they're like, you know, you, you, get, you get a lot of them. We don't know quite. There's somewhere between one and 400, you know, thousand. Because they, they really don't tell us. And I'm like, what? It's really hard to find out. Of all the stupid things you could tell somebody, we yeah, can't even tell a video we count. <laughs> we can tell how many playlists we have. Yep, we're going to need those. And by the way, guys. This is where you need the three millimeters. So the camera crew was correct. Yes. And it fits right in there, okay? All right, so we're ready to put these wings on. Um, okay, so we got two wing joiners. There's arrows that point forward. There's a bigger one and a smaller one. Should be pretty easy to distinguish between those two. But I'm just gonna stop for a second and talk about this. This plane's big, it's heavy, and I'm like actually honestly a little bit thinking, Oh, they didn't do a quick disconnect on these wings. They didn't do a quick disconnect on these wings. How do you take this thing apart? You're just gonna have to buy a new car. Yeah, I would get rid of the Miata. And by the way, look, our antenna's sticking out. Oh, I don't like that at all. Oh, hello. Watch this. Boop. I'm gonna just slide that down. Show the people. I'm holding here and I'm pulling it down. Oh, come on, you would. Who taped that thing too high? I like that they taped them in the diversity mm -hmm. configuration, which is pretty sweet. Okay, I'm gonna push that down just a hair. I'm gonna push it down. There we go. Good job, little antennae. Let's go right there. Okay, there we go. So for those of you that don't know what a diversity antenna is, that means that you have one that's pointed one way and one that's pointed at 90 degrees, so 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Not 90 degrees, 90 degrees, not 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. You could do them at like this, you could do them in an angle as long as they're 90 degrees of each other. And what that does is that picks up the different signals that are going from different angles and the different refractions of that RF. And it helps to make sure you don't lose signal, which is kind of nice. And by the way, this is the AR637TA. Not to be confused with the AR637T. The TA is in the bind and flies. And by the way, this is the Avian 70 amp. Brushless ESC light. And there is also a BC in there. We talked real briefly about the BC. 
and the BEC is going to be the battery eliminator circuit. And I don't know the specs on the battery eliminator circuit. And I feel like this thing could just stick out like that. I like it better like that. I don't like it up in there. I would rather have it out. Plus, and that prevents us from having the wire rub on the motor if I push it out. Mm, that'd be bad. Which would not be good, okay? You don't want to chafe your cables, okay? Now, we also have all these plugs that we're going to have to land. And I think their thinking was that once you're done landing, you can just unplug the ailerons, pull the whole wing off. I don't know. A lot of guys are going to have to tear this plane down. Look how big the tail is, guys. The Thank tail you. is, it's almost as wide as our walkway. Hope we can get through the door. Look at that. The plane stand is too short. I have to hang it off the edge. Off the edge. Yep, there you go. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Okay, I'm gonna put these flat. Now the wing's going on, guys. I felt like I was saying something and I interrupted myself. I'm good at that. I think you're supposed to like build, you're gonna build the wing though, right? And then put it all that, on at once. Okay, so guys, I gotta say, I don't, I don't wanna sound not grateful because I love this plane, but I am kind of annoyed that they don't have a quick disconnect on here. There should be, this plane is huge. Like you're gonna have to take it apart. Huh? Of all the times, like we got 1.1s that have quick disconnects. I wonder, I don't know, that is a little strange. <sighs> they must've run out of budget or something because this plane is sweet, but, and I feel like they, you know, for me, I don't take them apart. Okay. Right. But we fly here. It's going to live on my island for several weeks. Yes. Isn't and I it? will. And every day I get up and go to my day job, I'll look at it and think, boy, just think I could be flying that right now because it's calm right now. But by the time I get home, it'll be windy and terrible. Long, long rod in the front, short rod in the back. I feel like you read some sort of a, you know, like, um, like a spiritual document that told you all about Sometimes people create these things when you have to assemble and they like tell you the steps hmm. to yeah. do those things that's, in. That's a great idea. It's really like, kind of a new idea. I wonder, yeah, that's, that's super smart. Okay, I'm gonna put this stuff away. Cause it's annoying me that it's out. You're gonna, it's in my oh, way. You still have your two millimeter. This, this is like the super build up. We're building up today to this wing because we it's are. so huge. I gotta make sure I'm prepared. And by the way, these ones are taped in here, okay? I don't think it's gonna be so bad. Ooh, can you slide oh. those to the side there? Yeah, slide them to the side so I can penetrate with the uh, rod. You have to get it in both holes at the same time. Wow, I don't even think I can do that. <laughs> both holes at the same time? Well, I mean, the longer one's gonna have to go in slightly first. Well, I was gonna say, obviously. Um, yeah. So you, I'm, I just can't get my mind wrapped around this. Do you need this. help? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm literally having trouble with this. I'm, I'm literally, okay, so gear, flaps, lights, and ale. Ale, they've even included the ale run. Okay. So if you guys are new to the hobby, this is not a beginner plane. Hold the end, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, but there are carbon Z cubs, or excuse me, there are. T28s that you can get, that would be a perfect beginner choice. Or not a perfect beginner choice necessarily, but a good beginner choice. And that would be the 1.1 meter. And just to be clear, 1.1 meter is a little smaller <laughs> than this. The whole plane would fit like here, okay? The wingspan. And the cord of the wing would be like that. So it'd be like the size of the aileron. That is phenomenal. That's a really good fit, very easy yeah. to put together. I do want to rub these down though. You see that, those bumps? Oh. I don't like those bumps. That's no good. Yeah. Little rip on there, that's no fun. Okay, reinforcements on the top of the landing gear. Got the LEDs up front, very cool. Okay, all right, here goes nothing. This thing is so freaking huge, I don't want to like whack the light yeah, with them. Yeah, don't want to hit the lights. It's not like it's hard. I'm just trying to be careful for I once. Would... Am I going to hit the faucet or anything? Nope, you're clear over here. Okay, I'm getting all the wires fed through. Okay. Pretty easy process so far. Dropped right in. Okay. I mean, I mean, can't complain with that. Nope. Okay, so 
Wing joiners, then screws. The smaller one goes into the smaller hole and the bigger one goes into the bigger hole. Okay. Okay. Oh, that definitely is the bigger hole. This is a smaller hole. So this is the front one is a smaller one. Okay. Perfect fit, perfect color match. And then an arrow goes forward. Now, why does it matter? Because there is a unique shape on the front. It's different than the back slightly. And that makes for a really good fit and a really nice looking bottom of the wing. I love the way it looks. It looks amazing. I can't wait to see this thing in the air. Now there is a pretty good amount of dihedral on the, on the uh, Carbon Z T28. As you can tell, dihedral of course will kind of normally help the plane to naturally um, auto level to a degree, but it's, um, this thing has AS3X and safe. Artificial three axis stabilization is AS3X and then sensorated flight envelope is safe and that is auto leveling, okay? AS3X is a stabilizer. So the stabilizer will actively help to resist environmental impact like wind, thermals, squirrels. If a squirrel jumps on your wing, it will help to resist that. Because if you, if you move your stick and the plane responds accordingly, then the plane does what you tell it, right? Well, what happens if the plane moves without you telling it? Then AS3X resists it. Okay, artificial three-axis stabilization. Three axes being the pitch, roll, and yaw, which are the three primary control axes on an airplane. Of course, the ailerons control the roll axis, the elevator controls pitch axis, and the rudder controls, a rudder or steerable nose gear controls the yaw axis. And then of course the flaps, uh, taped reinforced hinge here it looks like. Didn't talk about that, I just noticed it. And this does have huge retracts and feels like some rock hard landing gear, which is pretty much par for the course. We've been complaining about that for years, so I guess it's nothing new. These screws are very easy to put in and take out. There's a lot of threads involved though. So if you're gonna be doing this out at the field, which I guess probably a lot of you are, first of all, you can take one wing off if you want, okay? You don't have to take the whole wing off because even taking the whole wing off and then separating the whole wing into two might be necessary. And I wonder if that's why they left the wires instead of doing a quick di disconnect. Mm. But mm. even a quick disconnect, you could have done a quick disconnect by the way, what sounded like somebody getting shot out there, and you guys probably didn't pick that up with your lapel mic, but our deck is frozen because we had a blizzard or whatever you want to call it, frozen. Ice storm. Ice storm. storm and it covered the entire deck and now our boards are popping like, it sounds ridiculous. It, it sounds like something it's, fell it like on the deck. It vibrates, the, the floor shakes when it And happens. when I walk out there, it's freaky because it's like pops when I walk yeah. out there. So anyway. Sounds like a squirrel jumped from the roof and to landed. To the transformer. Yeah. That'd be fun. Maybe one day we'll get that on video. We have a lot of squirrels. Oh, except we Actually, don't have power lines anymore. That's true. Oh, man. There's we haven't filled ourselves screwing this much for a long time. <laughs> a lot of screwing. <clears throat> Getting horsey, horsey sparks for that sort of stuff. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Just check it out. <laughs> you won't believe it. I about fell out of my chair. Okay, tight like a tag. So RC Sparks is another YouTuber from Can Canada. Oh. Yeah. It's from don't Canada. you know? Don't you know? He's got his maple syrup. He's got a huge following, huge. And I know huge, because I've got a Carbon Z T28. <laughs> anyway, his channel has taken a turn for different. Let's just put it that way. If you're curious, he used to do this. Now he does other things too. All right, so here we are guys, beautiful. I love the way it looks, it's built. It's huge. And by the way, I want to warn you about something. Okay, when you get a big plane like this, you do need to be mindful of a couple of things. The weight of the plane, 
plus you holding it will sometimes lead to dents. Okay, so be careful the way you hold it. Make sure you've got a good reinforced spot. And so I'm feeling here, it feels dense. The Carbon Z couple. Oh, <laughs> yes! That thing is huge. You want the canopy? I do. I can't be showing that off without the canopy. Just go ahead and stick it in the hole. Oh. I'm filming. <laughs> I'm holding a gigantic thing. <laughs> it's going to get damaged. Put your hand under there. No, just put your hand under there in case it falls. Further back. Thank you. I'm going to take this moment to just remind you guys, if you're married, you understand. <laughs> if you're not married, you don't. get back it's to okay. me. <laughs> that is awesome. Is, hold still. I'm trying to get it all in the shot. That is insanely big. I put it on my toe for you. We're going to need a new kitchen. Okay. House, basement. I like it. It's big. Gorgeous. So now I'm going to flip it up, right? And okay. we're going to do radio setup because we can, and I'm dying to see it do things. Okay. A couple things we normally do with radio setup too, is you need to make sure you clear your landing gear. The cowl is plastic. Be careful that your mains are free. If you're using a plane stand, and make sure that the retracts can actuate, okay? Make sure that your prop is free, okay? That thing is so awesomely huge. It is. I am loving the size. There's nothing quite like a big plane. You can't just replace that function. No matter how much you like something, a huge plane, huge, is even better. A Gen 2 5030C. Okay. We're going to probably also fly it on 7,000 milliamp hour, 30 C packs like this. We have punished many planes with these things and punished the batteries in turn. Okay. So we have radio set up here. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to basically check our charge. This thing no longer has a light on so we can unplug this thing. Oh, it comes with that doohickey. Look, it comes with that thing. That's so cool. I didn't know it I came with you that. Plugged it in. No, there's another one back here. That's the one from the NX8. So look, guys, watch. Oh. Whoop. So that's why it's a USB micro instead of being a USB C, so that you can use this thing. See? Look at that. Boop. I really thought you plugged it in earlier. <laughs> I did plug it in, but I mean, you have to do that still. Yeah. Okay, so okay. there's. Some information here. Now, I'm just gonna preface this whole NX10 setup by saying, yes, we are going to do a video that's gonna be separate, uh, that's gonna be the NX8 transitioning into the NX10, okay? We're gonna show peeling all the stickers except for maybe this one. We're gonna show all the setup, but we need to get this video done so it can be uploading and stuff, okay? So we'll just stick that there. I'll show you the Virgin turn on though. It's kind of personal. All right, throttle cuts on, knob centered, sticks, 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 everything is centered. Oh yeah, here goes. Amazing. Number one. We're on 147 on the other one. Oh yeah. So first things first, we're gonna click. We're gonna scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF. I'm gonna go down to about version 3.06. So we probably do need to update. I think 3.06 is not the latest. I thought we were like 08 or something. Yeah, pretty sure we are. So your Wi-Fi utility needs to get set up, but I'm gonna change the pallet utility first. And I'm just gonna show you this. So it says new models, this model. I'm gonna change new models, personalize this model, copy a palette. Whoa, look at all that. Palette editor, whoa, that's cool. You can edit stuff. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, so this new models are gonna be Why did it not change? Oh, it's because it's this model, Legacy. 
personalized, global, customized. Probably go to personal. There we go. Now, guys, I just want to show you why we do this. You see what happened with the saturation? Yeah, I just won't mess with see it. That? See that? See that? See that? That's the camera. Actually, that would like actually black, be that that's would be the best. Good too. Yeah, but you're not going to see it as good out in the out in the sun. Mm, that's true. So what we do is we do this because you see how you can see the colors. That's why we do it, not because we love orange. Right. Okay. Which is the way we do it because we film all this crap, okay? Yeah. Now, if you guys filmed all your own stuff too, then you might find that that's a helpful tool and you better be careful about being careful. Knock the plane off. Uh -huh. Here, I scooched it back so you got some room. Okay. okay, so the palette is the first thing we're gonna set up. And then a cereal port set up. I don't remember seeing that. Oh, that's pretty cool. So there's gonna be some new features that I may not be aware of and maybe some new things that aren't really new and I just haven't noticed them before, but I'll notice them now. Okay, so to start the first model on a Virgin brand new transmitter, I set my palette to that color. You don't have to do that. Also, I wanna show you one other thing I do, system setup, disconnect RF, and I'm gonna go down to system settings, username, all this stuff, alarm. I want the alarm as low as possible. Definitely want mode two. That means the throttle's over here. Rudder, you having problems standing up there? <laughs> I'm sure it'll still. Yeah, I was gonna say. And brightness at 30 seconds, it changes. I want it to be on all mm -hmm. the time. Again, because we're filming mostly. Default palette's orange, okay? So you see that? There's your other ones, okay? So orange. Inactivity alarm is inhibited or 60 minutes. I want it inhibited. Well, 60 minutes is 60 minutes is probably fine. Cause like we don't often leave it on for more than 60 minutes. Here's the problem guys, inactivity will go. <laughs> it's happened. Not to me. Ooh, the vibrator's at five. Oh, they won't turn here, that come up. over here, put your hand on yeah, it. Yeah, you're definitely you Turn that up. Wow. So I'm gonna tell you one thing that I liked better about the NX, uh, the DX18 than I do on the NX line. The vibrator was stronger. Well. So anyway, okay, swift board or spiral, swift board, rapid board, legacy. Oh yeah, buddy, that's what I like. I like the regular style, okay? Channel monitor, you can do 10 channels in this, or you can do nine, or you can do eight or seven or six or default. Why would you? I'm gonna go to 10. Uh, because it's, it takes up different amount of space. This is how you kept. See how I'm moving it to the perimeters. Okay. And you have to line everything up. You gotta do your knob. Also, there is a detent that you can activate, and there's different screws here, 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 and yeah, they're all in the front on this one, if I remember right. And you can adjust the tension, the spring pressure, and you can have a detent there. Okay, so I'm gonna center that. Okay, now this, oh, the knob, mm -hmm. the knob, the knob needs to be centered. So now I can see. Very nice. Okay, so the first setup is pretty much ready. Now, don't fear, guys, because what's going to happen is we're going to make this model. And you're like, but brother, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to put everything in it? Yeah. But we're not going to do it in this video just because it's going to be attached mostly to Carbon Z. T28, we don't want to take anything away from that. And that's going to make a really long video. So there'll be another video for you. We'll probably just like release it right before the unbox on this and then you'll be able to watch it at your convenience or in order if you want, whatever. So here we go. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to system setup and click again, disconnect RF, or alternatively, from here you can hit cancel and back at the same time and you can add a new model, okay? So I'm gonna go back and then I'll show you the long way. Scroll down to system setup and disconnect RF. That shuts off this little orange light. 
Then you go to model select, you can add a new model. I'm not gonna add a new model, I'm just gonna make the acro number one my new model, okay? You can also go from a bind and fly template and all that stuff, but why would you be watching Brian Phillips RC if you wanna download the model and do it the easy way? This is a very expensive utility that you just purchased and I want you to get the most out of it. If you don't know how it works, you're not gonna get the most out of it, I promise you that. If you download Bind and Fly profiles, I promise you that you will find things that you don't want to happen happening and it's better that you understand how it happens. Also, I highly recommend that you assign where everything goes so that it's the same on every model. I'm gonna be full disclosure, I almost never used my sliders on my NX or my DX18. I have had sliders before, I don't use them very much. So that's not why I have a 10. I have a 10 for the extra channels and I do need them, okay? But it's nice to have them and I'm glad they're there. Also, these gimbals are uh, Hall Effects gimb gimbals, which are supposed to be better. I can't feel a difference at all. Maybe we will at some point. Okay, so model type, here we go. We've already got that set as an acro. Model name, this is where we type it in. So I'm gonna type in here T28. You can see the legacy keyboard like we used to have on the NX. If you don't like that, or if you got like a full keyboard on here and you're like, I don't know why yours looks different. That's because we set it to legacy, okay? So I'm gonna type this in just like it is on the box essentially, and we'll be right back and show you what we did. Okay, so we've got the CZ T28 Trojan 2.0. I always show the size because it will matter someday. You're gonna have a different size T28. Believe me, because we have how many? We have 400 millimeters. We have... One point? No, we have a 980 yep. millimeter. Then we have a 1.2, we have a 1.1 meter. Then we have a 1.2 meter. Then we have a 1.4 meter. And then we have the two meter. So we literally have a bunch of sizes. Mm -hmm. And so you'll want to name them. Okay, so once you name them, you just hit back, then you can go aircraft type. This is where you set up stuff as per the manual, if you'd like. It does outline them super nice in the bind and flies. So what you can do is you can go up here and you can see how it says NX8, NX10. It's the top of the list here, which is pretty cool. Okay. So they're suggesting that the air, air, aircraft type be one aileron, one flap, which makes sense. Okay, one aileron, one flap, normal tail. And then we're gonna change the picture. Oh, oh this is an old style because we haven't updated the firmware. It's gonna look slightly different. Ooh, that's the only bad thing. We almost need to update the firmware just so people can see it. There's your T28. So we're on 3.06, but we're actually at like 3.8 something on our other I ones. Think so. So my apologies, guys. This is what it looks like when you get a brand new one. Um, it's generally a good idea to update your firmware, but we just want to get this plane done because we need to get it done. So that might be slightly different. And then we're going to set up, are they talking about flight modes in here? Uh, it doesn't look like anything. Jeez, 10% and 18%. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, so I don't see anything weird. Just got to reverse the servo. Okay, so I'll do flight mode setup. And I'm gonna set my flight mode to up here on switch D. Now, why D? This is gonna be flaps. This is gonna be retracts. This is gonna be throttle cut. This is gonna be reversing. Reversed, 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 normal. This is gonna be dual rates and expo, okay? And switch D is gonna switch between AS3X, off, and safe, and then C is gonna do nothing for now, okay? Because I have trouble getting to C and D compared to getting to G or to B or to A or to, what is that, H? H. H. Okay, so switch D, acknowledge that. Oops, switch D. And then we're not gonna redo anything there. Spoken flight modes, this is where we're gonna change the names of all three. These are just labels, keep in mind. So flight mode one, so we'll highlight this, cancel, cancel, and then we'll type AS3X because that's what I'm gonna assign eventually to this switch condition. But remember, this is just a label, AS3X. Now, why am I doing this through flight modes? Because what this does is flight modes open up a whole new world of possibilities, okay? So I'm gonna scroll way down here. We'll pause while we're scrolling, we're going down about here. Okay, there's safe mode, but we want AS3X mode, okay? AS3X mode. 
Now what's cool about this is you will now have that show on the display about here, okay? And then it's gonna, autom it's gonna audibly tell you what mode you're in as you change, okay? So now we'll go back, we'll, uh, flight mode two, this one's gonna be cancel, cancel, and then we're gonna go in here and type the word off. And you're like, why, why do you have to write off on there? Because this is, if you wanna have the stabilizer off, you can do that even on a bind and fly. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down a little bit further and we're gonna find the off. And we found off. Okay, then we're gonna go to this one, cancel. Highlight, cancel, cancel. Now we're gonna type in this spot, we're gonna put safe, S-A, sensor, aided, flight, envelope. Okay. We're gonna scroll all the way down to about like there. Safe mode. Safe mode off. AS3X mode. Now when you're out in the regular menu, it's gonna audibly tell you every time you change mode, okay? So that's super nice. You can also do the same thing with other flight modes if you wanted for like flaps and landing gear and things like that if you want, okay? Now the thing that's nice about that is that you can actually have different audible feedbacks for what's happening, but you can also do audible feedbacks based on switch conditions as well. So we're not gonna do all that today, but we've done it in past videos. And if you wanna do it, it's not a big deal, but we just want you to know that it does exist, okay? So probably the most important settings coming up next, which is gonna be, well, we'll do channel sign real quick. So we don't want auxiliary two attached to B, so I'm just gonna hit inhibit there. Okay. All right, so we're back to this. Now, we're gonna click. We're gonna do rates and expo. We're gonna set that up. Switch F. We're gonna do 5%. Then we're gonna do 10%. And we're gonna do 20. Now, we don't even look at the manual on this setting unless it's like a weird plan like a VTOL or some sort of a unique control system with a flight controller in it. Let's see what they do say. They suggest high rates at 100, Expo at 10, low rates at 70, Expo at five, and then servo travel to 100%, okay? So in our case, we're gonna do it our way, okay? So that's one, that's the lower amount, that's the normal amount, this is the higher amount of Expo, and it also drops the rates down. So it's gonna be the softest sticks on the ailerons, this is where we're gonna start. We have a doubling effect and we have a halving effect. When we go to fly, if we realize we need more, we can get more. If we realize we have too much and we need it to be a little bit more responsive, we can do that. Then when we land, we'll make that the new middle or we'll make that the new middle. Then this would become 20. Timber. The box just fell in our mudroom, it's so huge. It's probably, a cat, probably a cat probably. playing with it. Okay, so then this would become 20, and then this higher setting would become 40. You might drop the 90 down to 75%, but then this one would become 10, okay? So you have a halving and a doubling. But that's after your first flight, so you always start in the middle. Now, we'll do the same thing for each of the three control axes. Whoops. So we'll do five, then we'll do 10, then we'll do 20, and we'll drop the rates down to 90. Now you guys are probably wondering, why don't you split them out, especially now that you have, you know, sliders on here? Well, because I don't wanna be overwhelmed with all those different things that I need to do. I wanna be overwhelmed with only the things I wanna be overwhelmed with, which is the beauty and majesty of this beautiful plane, right? Right. I definitely stole those words out of your mouth. You did. Okay, so there's the middle setting, okay? All right, now throttle cut, the most important one yet. Highlight, set it to switch H. Should be on by default if you ask me. Okay, you'll see it says minus 100. Okay, shut it off. Now it works, you can tell it's live, okay? Throttle curve, we're not messing with, we don't need it. Digital switch setup, that's where we're gonna be doing one of those for thrust reverse. So we could do that, but let's just go ahead and click and scroll down to system setup. Let's disconnect RF and let's go to channel assign. Auxiliary two, auxiliary one is already predefined as working for flaps. So auxiliary two is gonna be switch G. 
Why channel seven for G? Because that happens to be the default for the control system in the AV and ESC. Now you don't have to use channel seven, but that's just what I'm gonna use this time, okay? So channel eight is defaulted to this, and so it's kind of nice to not have to worry about that being controlling your thrust reverse. If you have this from another plane, and then you're in there and you accidentally have your thrust reverse turn on, you're gonna hate yourself for it. So make it easy, make it the same, always, every time, okay? And there's gonna be some variations to that because some planes have less control surfaces. Now, I don't even know what, this is lower level, what does that stand for? Right, left and right. Oh, left. auxiliary four is, that's your, that's your lower level, lower lever. Like your left lever and your right lever. Oh, okay. Lever. Hmm. But yeah, that doesn't, that's not speaking to the channel that's controlling, that's controlled by it. It's speaking to what's attached to it. So auxiliary four is controlled by auxiliary four. Auxiliary five is controlled by auxiliary five. And then this is auxiliary two on channel, um, channel seven, but that's going to be controlled by G. This is G guys. You can see it's right there. It says G it speaks to this. Okay, so now we're gonna walk back out. Now, the other thing cool about flight mode, you can see that there, AS3X. Flight mode on AS3X. So you never have that ambiguity about what mode you're in, except for during setup, because that's just a label. It's not actually turned on. We're gonna show you how to turn it on here shortly. Okay, continuing through the setup. Now we need to do flap system. Switch B. Now, this is where you can follow right along because it'll be handy. Position zero is going to be minus 100. That's so crazy. There's so many things in the monitor. Yeah. It's cool. Okay, there's minus 100. No elevator correction at that position, of course. Then 0%. We're going to do 10% correction. That's a lot. Then we're going to go to plus 100. You want to go back, please? Oh, you're showing it on the screen. Too. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're doing. Sorry, camera crew. So 18, speed's gonna be two seconds. Sometimes on the bigger planes, I like to go more like three. Okay. It's gonna be activated by switch B. You can see it work in the monitor down there. And you can even see the delay. So pretty cool. Mixing, one thing you might wanna add if you're a little bit lesser skilled, newer, less experienced pilot would be an aileron to rudder, okay? You can turn that on, or you can make it a relative to uh, switch conditions. So if you turn it on, then it's gonna be a percentage basis, okay? Now, I'm not sure why it doesn't have, see how it just says percentage? You can change the curves. There we go. So based on different flight modes, so that'd be kind of an interesting way of doing it. But when it goes to on, you should be able to adjust those percentages. So I don't know if that's a glitch. And we are in version 3.6, so maybe that's been fixed. I don't remember seeing that in the versions that we have. Let's just say we tied it to this flight mode, okay? Safe mode, off. Safe mode. So in safe mode, you wanna tie the ailerons to the rudder. And you can see it move right there in the monitor, that little mini monitor. So for every 100%, you'd get 25% out, okay? But I'm not gonna use that. I don't necessarily want that. And in safe mode, there's already gonna be a little bit of a mix anyway, I think. Okay, so now continuing on, uh, we need to reverse the servo travel on gear, okay? That's just per the manual. It says right there, reverse. And we should be set up, okay? Are you gonna set a timer? Yeah, if we know how long the timer's supposed to be. <clears throat> we don't really need a timer also. Mm -mm. So just to be clear, guys, timers are becoming a thing of the past when you have telemetry. Telemetry, of course, is transmission received from up there to this. We can see it on the screen and then we are controlling that way. So it's actually full duplex communications. We are communicating where we want all the servos to be based on where the sticks are and where our positions are up here. We're communicating what mode we wanna be in and we're also receiving data back called telemetry. Now let's set a timer just for, you know, posterity. Timer, let's set it to, I'd be surprised if we don't get eight minutes out of it. 
And let's make a one out active with 25% being our threshold to start counting. And it's gonna keep counting with the one out. Otherwise it would only count when you're over the threshold. At one minute, I want a voice call out that there's one minute left. At 10 seconds, I want a voice countdown. At expiration, I want tone and vibrate. And then a tone every minute thereafter. All right guys, clear the timer. Take off, start flying. Regardless of the stick condition, it keeps counting. You can cancel to clear. Okay, all right, cool, cancel. Throttle cuts on. Go to monitor, you can see. Throttle cuts on. Throttle cuts off. And look, you still see the mode you're in. Okay, throttle cuts on. Clear the timer. Now, we need to do some binding. This is where it gets potentially dangerous because we have a prop installed. It's pretty easy to take the prop off. If you were in any question, this would be the time where you'd either take it back off or just having not put it on at all. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up without this. I'm gonna set it up with the smaller battery, which is a Gen 2. There's no bounce lead on here. We just have this main discharge lead and a data line that goes through to that naked pin in the middle, okay? So this is, this is an IC5. You could also use an EC5. XT90s also do fit. If you have a battery with an XT90, I think it'll work. I don't know. I don't have an XT90 handy or I would test it for you. I forget which way it is. It goes one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna pop this off. Obviously we need to bind it. So the next move is to bind. I wanna make sure that I'm in a safe position so that if this thing were to try to take off, I'm not gonna get cut and I'm not gonna lose access to my controller from which to control, okay? So I'm gonna be over here with it. I'm gonna have my throttle cut on. Camera crew, you are where you needed to be. Thank you. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is- Plug stuff in first or bind first? What? Are you? Oh yeah, we gotta plug all the yeah. wings and stuff in. Crap, I didn't even think about that, folks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this plane slightly forward and I'm gonna tip it down so I can see a little bit better and that you guys can also see a little bit better. And we're gonna plug all these wires in. My camera crew was totally correct in that. Okay, so we have ailerons. Why the heck are there three of them? What? That is so weird. Okay, sorry, I gotta move this forward a little bit so it's closer to the edge. Okay. So I can roll this just a little further. I'm running into this thing now. Why the heck are there three aileron plugs? Hmm. Can you come to the other side? Yes. I'll trade you. Yep, that's fine. All right, so now we've got a pretty nice clean install, but all these wires need to get plugged into something. There's three flaps too. What the heck, were they like short on twos? So they just put threes in everything. Hmm. Very weird. Okay, whatever, I don't care. It's not a big, I mean, it's better than a one. All right, so this is a gear. So let me guess, gear. Okay, so we're gonna plug that into gear. Now I'm gonna go under here. This is the cable management part that people ask for, which I think is weird, but that's fine. So black is the same as brown in this regard. So I want the brown and the black away from my belly. I'm blocking them with my thumbs, but you can see now. Okay, I'm just doing one at a time. Uh, so these are, LED oh, that's why, LEDs. So you can plug in the LEDs. That must be what it is. Okay, so aileron. So here's the aileron. Shouldn't matter which one you plug it into. Unless of course you're trying to split them off. If you are trying to split them off and using additional, uh, additional channels, you'll need more than what you've got on this uh, six channel receiver. But this actually has two additional channels right on the top for different controls. And we're gonna be using channel seven for thrust reverse. Okay, just be aware of that. If you purchase an AR um, uh, 60, 637, then we can, an AR 637T, we can help you set that up. We've done them a few times. Okay, so for like a plug and fly plane. Okay, so flaps, where's flaps? Here's flaps. Okay, so brown is up. I don't know if you guys can tell, 
but I just grab whatever I grab and then just work my way until I run out of wires. Okay, here's another flap, that was convenient. Brown is up, I always have to pull those little wire things back. The markers, okay, you can see that. And uh, if you guys are watching this video and you're new to Brian Phillips RC, welcome. We try our best to get to comments, don't always get everywhere we want, and for that we apologize. There was a time in our history where we replied to 100% of comments, but we literally cannot keep up. We wish we could because we love interacting with our audience. You guys are the best. And if you do want to get a little bit easier access to us, the Patreon is a good way to do that um, because we just see them. Okay, gear. Uh, Patreon links down in the video description below, kind of by where we have the airplane that's in the current video. We always link to the airplane down below the battery and any equipment that we use that's particular to a video. Okay, so we have brown, we have black this time. It's not uncommon. Please don't block my lights. Thank you. Okay, so we've got that. I feel like we're running out of plugs here. Okay, here's an aileron. So aileron, oh good, there's another aileron. Okay, so we're gonna go down kind of into the same pocket. I don't know if you guys figured out my rhyme to my reason. There's aileron. So aileron's gonna go right here. And I got that backward, guys. See, you can plug them in. You're not supposed to be able to, but they do go. Okay, brown is away from my belly. Brown is up. Okay, so we've got that in there, so it's held. Now we've got one potential LED plug here available. And the brown is gonna be going with the black and the red is in the center, so just favor the top and you'll be able to slide that in like so. So that'll plug in one of the lights, which is super nice that they're labeled and we can actually take action on where we want this stuff to go. That's for the steerable nose wheel there. So I'm actually gonna unplug this and untangle it because they tangled it at the factory. I don't like the way that they tangled it. So I'm gonna just untangle that right now. Okay, so not to be confused with the steerable nose wheel that goes in and out as a retract. That's the steerable wheel part. Okay, so one of the LED plugs is plugged in. Here's the second LED plug, but it's not landed on anything yet. So that's gonna go to the flap one, okay? So you see this brown is down this time, black is down this time. Okay. Now these are a little bit weird to plug in because they're a different type of connector, but those little micro GST connections there, just make sure it catches that little lip. And there you have it guys, we're all plugged in. Now this is a programming wire, okay? So if you see that and you're not sure what you're looking at, don't feel bad. It is a weird cable. We don't have them on every ESC, but we have them on Avian ESCs because there is a special programming wire. Um, we've recently learned that the Predator ESCs use this for thrust reverse, but we don't use that for thrust reverse. On an Avian, we use available channels through a serial bus that goes um, all through everything. And I'm not sure how all that works yet, but it's part of the smart technology, okay? So now I'm gonna take all this except for this, and I'm going to try to tuck it into that hole right now. If you guys wanna just watch how I do this, I get my finger and I grab a bundle. Then I fold it over and I stuff it down into the hole. In the hole. In the hole. As you can see, it looks really nice and neat and tidy. And I do actually like the way that that turned out. That was very clean and simple. Mm -hmm. That was an easy plug-in session. Now there's one other thing we need to do and that's gonna be constituted by this, the battery. There's a huge piece of Velcro and I refuse to put a gigantic piece of Velcro on my batteries. But what I am gonna do instead is I'm going to take this giant thing and I'm gonna put some shelf liner on it. And you're like, what is shelf liner, Brian? Shelf liner is what your wife uses to keep your spoons and knives and crap like this that's in your drawers from shaking and splashing all over the place when you slam your drawers, okay? 
Also, what I use them for is this battery that's slick, that slides, will not slide. And so you need very limited amount of pressure to hold it down. So now this is gigantic, like way longer than it needs to be. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just size it up so we have an ample amount. And I kind of hate to waste the big piece because I've got a million little pieces, but I am gonna go ahead and, well, we might need, nah, we're never gonna need it for anything else. Right? That's okay, you can still keep it forever. Yeah, I'll still keep it forever, says the camera crew. So now I'm gonna lay this down. I don't know why I flipped that over, it's the same on the top <laughs> and the bottom. But we're gonna peel this back. Okay, see? Then we're gonna stick this down somewhere, probably here. And that's as simple as it gets, folks. And then we're just gonna cut this with a pair of scissors. It's very simple stuff. And then all that does is rather than having a piece of Velcro that is always in the wrong spot, I promise you it will be in the wrong spot because in my case, every single time I need to put a battery in and there's a piece of Velcro on it, it seems like about half the time it's in the wrong spot and it drives me crazy. And so what I've decided is I'm just gonna do shelf liner trick in pretty much every plane, unless I can't do it for some stupid reason. And if I can't do it, then I'll figure out a way to do it. Now, the thing that's nice about this being on Velcro is I can locate the battery wherever I think it's gonna go. And then once I've established where it needs to be, I'll be able to reposition it so it's right under there. Now, you can also pull that Velcro off if you're not gonna use Velcro, or if you have Velcro on your patch, you can just stick them in there, okay? So now the next step is to just literally stick them in here. These are mid-grade straps. They're not the highest quality. They're not the lowest quality, but they're very long, which is nice. You got a huge variety of batteries that you could put in here. I have no problem seeing somebody using multiple 5,000s, maybe even more. I don't know why you would want to do four, but if you could get the CG to work, that would be so cool. You could fly for a long time but I wouldn't be surprised as much room as we've got in there. I didn't pull that very tight, by the way, but look how much extra room you've got still. It's almost too big. So now, thinking of CG, we haven't marked it, we haven't tested it, but I don't really care because my next move is to literally get this thing so that it's safe, so that I can go ahead and bind it. Okay, I wanna get back onto the cowl. I wanna make sure that my flaps are not gonna actuate into something and damage themselves. See my flaps here? I'm riding the lip of that. So I do not want to ride the lip of that mm. on the flaps. So I have to be a little bit careful that wherever this sits, my first of all, my nose gear will actuate and my flaps will clear, okay? Because this is a big plane and that nose gear is gonna go right up at the front. I don't know if that's gonna clear yet. I think it is, but I'm not sure. So I like to bind these things level and true just in case we have some interference with the safe and it doesn't want to bind or not bind, but initiate. There's a difference, okay? Initiation happens at the beginning of power up on AS3X equipped gear. Okay, now we also have a linkage that needs to be installed. So we're just gonna get it ready so that we don't forget. That would be a bad thing to forget because you, you wouldn't have an elevator. Okay, so we have that couple turns while it's off. Make sure it doesn't yank out. I got burned by that here not too long ago. On not a Horizon plane, by the way. All right, so this is ready to rock and roll for binding, okay? So our transmitter's on. Everything is built. I'm gonna scroll down and it says bind. Now you can also power this down and then press and hold this while powering it on but I'm just gonna do this. First things first, if this thing starts spinning, I know it's not gonna hit my stand, then I'm gonna be safe. But I'm gonna be able to secure the plane. Worst case scenario, I wait for that thing to go to low voltage cut off. That would suck. It's never happened in my life, but I have a plan. So I'm gonna execute that plan. First things first, plug it in. Oh yeah. Listening, waiting for safety, nothing started. I'm gonna press the bind button, okay? Now there's a flashy light. I'm gonna click bind. Camera crew, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm trying to show them. You're not gonna see that. Bind, bind, binding. Telemetry. One dance. Making sure the prop doesn't start. 
securing it until you can trust it. Elevator moves, ailerons move, rudder moves, steerable moves. Throttle cut is on. I'm securing the plane and I'm testing the throttle. Throttle cut is working. I am going to shut off the throttle cut with the stick in the downmost condition. Throttle cuts off. That's what it looks like when it spins at 6%. Throttle cuts now on. I now know I can trust my throttle cut. Okay, because I can trust my throttle cut and I have Position myself in a place where I built a habit to check throttle cut. I feel safe doing this. If you don't, don't have the prop on at this point, okay? So we'll be working close to it. But for all of the naysayers out there, just remember, you're gonna be putting a battery in this plane every time you fly it. So you will be vulnerable at some point. You might as well get it under control, understand how the plane works, and be as safe as possible. Those inboard white lights are freaking huge yeah, they are. and really bright. I love this, look at this. This is like making the plane glow. Yeah. I know that's not scaled, but it's good when you're Super flying because you need to see. And then look at this. We have ultra bright brights, mm -hmm. ultra bright and not flashing, which I love, not flashing, which I love. I love flashing any crash beacons, but the thing is, you know what I love even more? Seeing my plane. Yeah. Flashing lights are neat on ambulances. Okay. All right, cool. So. Elevator needs to be hooked up. We obviously don't have AS3X or safe working. So we're safe to go ahead and put that on. So let's do that right now. So the elevator linkage is sitting here. I'm gonna just kneel down here so it's easy to see. And do you remember where they go? Uh, no, I do not. So I thought you checked on that I earlier. Didn't. All right, so in the manual, it shows putting this on the second to last on the elevator, and then the middle of five on the control horn of the servo, okay? So then you gotta get it centered so that this is mechanically centered, okay? So the middle is the middle of five is gonna be here, and then, geez, I gotta go way in, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be on the one in from the end, right? Yes. Okay, so I actually am gonna pull this off, and I'm gonna hold this three fingers, and I'm gonna actually hold down here so that I can spin it. See how now I can spin it? Just don't accidentally tap, plug that in. Cause once you push that in, it, it will break the head off of it sometimes, okay? So I'm going a long ways in actually. I hope we can get it all the way without having to shorten it. You see the threads there, we're running out. If we do run out, that would be a bummer. I'm not sure exactly the best recourse if we did because you see we're sticking out the end now, okay? So we're getting into where there's no threads on it, okay? So I am going to turn this in and see if we've got it. And oh, there we go. How close are we to set? You're real close. Yep, that's perfect, good, because I need to come back out. That's what I was hoping for. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna just twist that out a few times. I kind of forgot that I needed to lift the elevator up, obviously. Okay, so now eventually that's going to snap and then we're going to use this little fuel ring or this fuel hose to actually hold it in place, okay? So we're going to go to the middle, we're going to turn that into position and then we're just going to hold that right level. We want to be one hole down, right? So I'm going to go a couple more turns out. Camera crew, are you giving it a shot? Second from the bottom. Second from the bottom. Okay, so second from the bottom. Fortunately, this is a really robust, uh, linkage and everything. Surprise these aren't ball balls. Mm -hmm. That's very unusual. And this echelon of plane, but you know what? It's a linear movement. So I guess it probably doesn't really matter. You really need the balls if you've got uh, a non-linear movement. That, uh, that is not level. It's close. Okay, another one. Try it again. That is not good. Need one more half, one more half again. We'll see how that looks. Now that's too far. So now I'm gonna go one half back. And I'm looking at both sides, folks. So what you're looking for is right here, okay? Show them, you wanna line up this portion here, okay? That's the only place you're gonna be able to see. And once that's centered, like here, focus that. You guys see that? 
you're trying to get that centered and that centered, okay? It's very, it's, it's sometimes very difficult to see, but on this one, it's pretty easy to see. Now I'm gonna snap that shut. I'm gonna grab the plane and just slide this fuel tube down and then check for clearance. Okay, so now while we're back here, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right, roll left, roll right, take off flaps, landing flaps. Okay, those are huge flaps, I love it. Okay, now the gear, throttle cuts on. Here goes the gear. Up, down. Oh, they're so huge. Oh my goodness, I love it. Now I'm surprised that they're just a spring, but this is a huge music wire, guys, so I'm not sure how well that's gonna be, but it is definitely gonna be heavy duty, okay? So heavy duty landing gear should be good for off-road flight, meaning if you're flying from a grass field. Um, we generally fly off of a paved strip, as you know, and we don't deviate from that very much, even though we could. There's not really any advantages to flying off the of grass unless, of course, you have a super hard tire and you want to try to soften your landings. So love the landing lights. Wow. Good steerable. You can definitely see that BEC working hard because the LEDs are dimming as that all happens. That is so cool. Okay, so now we need to thought we need to talk about throttle cut or excuse me, thr thrust reverse. Okay, thrust reverse is a function where you tell the ESC to run the motor the wrong direction. Okay, I'm going to check the direction of rotation. I've got clearance. Throttle cut is off. Careful. Mm -hmm. Here goes nothing. That's forward thrust. Throttle cuts on and tested. Okay, that was like 25% throttle or so. Wow. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to turn this plane so we're safe and uh, we don't have to worry about getting hit in case something would go wrong, but we need to be able to get to the battery because this next step has to happen within so many seconds. And see this guys, there's your battery voltage. All sorts of stuff. Oh, we also need to we also need to do safe setup. But let's do the Avian thing first. Okay, so Avian program step one: uh, hold for five to ten seconds, low throttle, up elevator, and left aileron. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. But we have to power cycle first. So we're going to unplug the battery. You see where my elbow is, guys? If this thing were spinning, I would have been cut there. Okay, so I'm actually going to just change my body position. Throttle cut is on. We trust it but we don't ever trust it until we know and we've done it a few times, okay? We're just being extra careful. Plug it in while it's initiating. See this? It came back up with avian program. So we're gonna go down and left. That's gonna change eventually. Okay, now down and right. Then it's gonna load another menu. Okay, so you've got flight mode, brake disabled, use the left and right. Reverse thrust, brake force. This is where you can change your brake force. I never mess with the brake force. There is a proper setting for that. You can change your BC voltage if you wanted. Timing, rotation, like I said, we can change that easy enough. Thrust reverse on channel seven. Remember how we talked about that? We assigned it to switch G, exit with save, and in order to do it, you move over to the right. Now it's gonna go through the normal setup. You could walk back in the menu if you needed to right now, but just, that's why throttle cut's so important. You saw I bumped it, but we're still safe. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll back over to the main mode, hit cancel. Now I'm gonna come back over here, secure the plane safely, get in a position where you're safe. Throttle cut is off. I'm securing the plane by holding it. That's going forward thrust. There's reverse thrust. Nope, it's still forward, but it sounds different. 
That's reverse thrust. That's forward thrust. Throttle cuts on and tested, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up, this is going forward thrust, and so when we look at monitor mode, you can see whichever one moves, auxiliary two there, okay? So we wanna change the settings so that minus 100 is when it's all the way forward. Now there's two ways to accomplish that. The easy way is go to servo setup and reverse auxiliary two. That would do it, but we're not gonna do it that way. I'll show you another way. You're gonna go to digital switch setup, select the switch G, and I want this to be forward thrust right here. That's position zero. This is gonna be reverse, and that's also gonna be reverse. We're not doing pilot fatigue on this because it's a prop driven plane, okay? Pilot fatigue would be where you go like that and it gives full thrust backward, which is a good way to chop your hand off with a big prop like this. So we do that all the time on EDFs, okay? We're just gonna do forward thrust and then reverse thrust and then reverse thrust again, okay? Meaning you have to move the stick to control the thrust level, but it is gonna go reverse, right? Here's how you do it. So now it says default is 100, so we're gonna change that to minus 100. And that's gonna mean when your stick is forward, it's gonna give you forward thrust. And then this one, we're gonna go plus 100, so there's no ambiguity. You don't want it at zero because it could be like just a little bit over, just a little bit under, and that could cause you a big problem. So we're gonna set this to plus 100 as well. And by the way, guys, here on Brian Phillips RC, we teach you how to do these things, and YouTube doesn't like because it's too long. So if you wanna help support our channel, smash the like button right now. Come back for more, obviously click the bell for notifications if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and then click the bell and smash the like button in whatever order you want. But then definitely come back. We have so much new footage coming. Obviously this is one of them. Another one we're gonna be doing soon is the NX8 into the NX10. So you can do all your configuration. You can copy all your models over, but you're not gonna be copying your binds. So just be aware you do have to rebind your planes, which is a huge pain, but it is what it is. Anyway, okay, so we have our timer set. We have our thrust reverse set. Let's test it, okay? I'm gonna get in a place where I can control the plane and be safe. Throttle cut is off. I'm just holding this here. Forward thrust, reverse thrust, reverse thrust, reverse thrust, back to forward thrust. Throttle's off, throttle cut's on tested. Everything's good to go. So now we need to set up safe. So we have established that we can trust this plane enough to manipulate and handle it and not have to worry about getting our hand cut off. We don't need to reboot it. I don't need to worry about having my hand here at this point. At least I personally don't. If you still have your apprehension, then act on it. Okay. I'm not going to ever tell somebody to not be careful, but I am going to tell you to be a realist. If you're playing with model airplanes, it's possible you can get cut. It's possible something can fail. Don't get cut when something goes wrong, okay? The way you do that is you test things, obnoxiously call out that your throttle cuts on every time it's on, and then people will think you're annoying and you're not gonna go to the hospital, okay? So that's a good trade-off in my book. All right, that thing is so big, I can barely fit it on the counter. No. <laughs> elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Everything good, y'all left, y'all right. Steerable, steerable, flaps, flaps, and you can see the correction. So everything is working in this, the correct direction. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click, we're gonna scroll down to forward programming, which is where we set up our AS3X and save. Gyro settings, now we're gonna have to talk about safe select. Okay, do we want it to be on or off? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Safe mode, AS3X mode. I do want safe select on. How do we wanna control it? Uh-oh, we didn't make an assignment, guys. So we have to walk out, and then we have to go down to system setup, disconnect RF, go to channel assign, and let's find one that we're not using. I'm not using that one. I'm gonna assign it to switch D, okay? Oh, problem is I think that might be too high. Let's go in and see if it works. Forward programming, gyro settings, 
Save select. It is on, but now we have to assign it oh. aux4. Okay, so now safe is currently on. Now it's off. And I want AS3X also off. See, it's saying it's on, but it's not. Now AS3X is on. So what do we have to do to fix that? Now that we've got that all set, we can go up to servo setup, travel, reverse, and we can reverse auxiliary four in this case is what we happen to pick. You could have used auxiliary three if you're on an NX8, but you would have just lost your scroll, but who cares? You don't use it for anything in this application anyway, okay? So. Now, how do you know if it's right? First thing is the easiest way, AS3X. See, I've got it locked all the way down. I'm gonna hold that stick in that position. Watch what happens. Off, nothing. Safe, it limits the amount of movement, okay? There you go. Off means everything moves a little bit further. Now, in off or AS3X, you have to give 25% throttle for the AS3X to activate. So I'm gonna shut off my throttle cut. I'm gonna secure the plane safely with the tail. I'm gonna give it throttle. That's 60% I can barely hold it. Okay, throttle cuts on. Now AS3X should be active and I'm gonna pick up the plane carefully and I'm gonna wiggle it. Toward the camera crew, rudder goes toward the camera crew, toward me, elevator goes up, elevator goes down. Either one goes up, either one goes down. I can only see one because it's so big. Normally I hold the camera, I can't hold the camera. This thing's too heavy to hold the camera and show, but I'll try to pivot by lifting off the tail wheel and watch the rudder closely. Going this way, going that way, going this way, going that way. Can you see it? A little bit. Give me the camera. I'm not actually holding it, I can do this. Okay, so you see I'm gonna hold this, I'm just lifting off the tail wheel or the nose wheel. Turn that way. Turn this way. Now from the top, turn that way, turn this way, turn that way. Okay, hard to see, but you can definitely see it. Now same thing, push down, it goes down. Push up, it goes up. Push down, it goes down. Push up, it goes up. Push down, it goes down. It's subtle, but you can see it in real life. Now, I'm gonna try to pick up the wing and that's gonna pivot off of this wheel and it's just gonna rock, okay? So that should make this go up when I lift. And if I push down, it's gonna go down. So it's gonna resist whatever the environmental impact is. I'm the environmental impact. Up, down. Eh, kinda hard to see. I'm gonna try one more thing. I'm gonna just move that way. I'm gonna move this way and I'm just afraid to hit my faucet. Yeah, it's just too big. Yeah. I can't, I can't show it the way I would normally show it. Okay, so guys, I'm sorry, it's just too hard to show, but I can go into safe now. Now which, I put it in off. Now watch this. It's quiet. That means there's no stabilizer. Now, safe mode is going to have AS3X and auto leveling. Okay? They call it angle demand. Whoops. That's what I was afraid of because it's so dang big. I'm going to lay this off to the side here. I've already checked the throttle cut. I am confident it's not gonna start on me. I'm gonna flip this plane upside down when I do the ailerons are going to try to find the quickest route to level because I'm in safe. You guys see? Mm -hmm. And once I get past the center, it's gonna go the other direction, see? See the rudder moving? It's trying to find the quickest route level. And then see the elevator? See how it's pointed up? Mm -hmm. Now watch this, once you get to be in level, it doesn't need to do that anymore, but watch this. Now it's gonna try to level the plane off, okay? See that? That's safe. Sensor-aided flight envelope. Now sensor-aided flight envelope does two things. It does AS3X plus auto leveling. It's actually called angle demand, and that's where it demands that it goes to a certain angle, level. Okay, and that's only on the roll and the pitch axis, but they also mix in rudder behavior as well on certain models. This one, I believe they do. Some of them they don't, okay? Also, this is safe select, it's not full safe. Full safe has additional features, and if you ever wanted to get full safe so you can have a panic recovery button, 
Just do yourself a favor and don't. It's basically the same as just turning it on, except that panic button can be depressed once and then it stays on for three seconds so that you crash <laughs> into something, okay? And that's just the way it works. Yeah. And when you press a button, like say you're going down like this, you press a button, it levels, and then it stays there for a second. Now you can still somewhat control, but it reduces your controls even more than normal safe. For that reason, I rarely talk about setting up the panic button. We did set up the panic button on an FMS Ranger in a 1.3 meter size, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. So. 5% on battery. So guys, our battery's about to die and I'm about to need dinner because it's like midnight or something. <laughs> this is super cool. I can't wait to fly the NX-10. We're gonna go over more details on this in a, in a very soon to release video. We'll take and get these things ready to rock and roll. But in the meantime, everything is ready to rock and roll on this, and I am dying to fly, but as you can see, it's a little bit dark to be flying. So we'll be back as soon as we can, and if you guys haven't already seen the maiden flights, they publish usually one minute after we publish our Unbox Build Radio set. The only reason we do that is because we want the latest video to be the one that's the flight, because that's what most people watch. Hopefully you already connected the dots. Also, we're probably gonna dump that one some point. I'm not sure when, maybe it'll be a Sunday night release. I don't know. It'll probably be right before the unbox if we can get it done in time. But we wanna get this to you as soon as possible because we know a lot of you guys are gonna want this and you need to order it now if you're thinking about it because back ordering a plane is usually kind of faux pas and asking you to do it, I would consider it faux pas myself. But this one, I want you to have it, okay? So if you wanna have one, Back order it, please. Um, th there will probably come a time where there's like 17 or 18 of them left over at the end of the last big order. And then if you're the 19th guy, you're not gonna get one, okay? So if these things sell well, then Horizon has already said, they actually came out and said, we won't do a plane this size again because it's just too logistically challenging if this doesn't sell well. The good news is I think it's selling well. The bad news is if batch two comes in and then all of a sudden it stops selling, then they're gonna be stuck with their you know what in their hand and they're gonna be like, let's not do that again. So let's reward the companies that give us the things that we want and this is definitely it. And I know you guys do want them. So check it out in the links in the video description below. You support us with small commissions from them. You don't pay, you pay the same price. You get your same reward bucks, whatever, three, four times, whatever's going on at the time. You can still use coupon codes, all that stuff. Not necessarily from us, but check brianphillipsrc.com and you can see if there is something there. And we always do list those if we know about them. Generally, they don't run them on these new planes though. So just be aware of that. So that being said, guys, we love having you here with us. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC. We hope you'll be a part of it. Definitely subscribe, click the bell for notifications and smash the like button. You'll help to fend off the people at Google that wanna see us fail because we're here to help teach you and not just do some sort of a stupid dance and give you entertainment for 30 seconds because here we want you guys to have a good life and enjoy something cool and wholesome and enriching like flying radio controlled airplanes and that sort of thing. And it's just an amazing experience. And if you haven't ever done it, stay tuned. There's so much more. If you guys are new and you need some help, we've got beginner videos that go way more deep than this. That's gonna help you a lot more. This is a more advanced plane. Admittedly, it's only a uh, experience level two. So this is not like, I wouldn't ever recommend you begin with this because it's just big and expensive. But the thing is, it's not a hard to fly plane. It's just big, so you need room and you need enough skill to be able to keep people safe around you because it's a big plane. So beyond that, it's not gonna be a hard to fly plane and you'll see that in the unbox, excuse me, in the maiden flights. So stay tuned, camera crew, if I missed anything, I feel like I've missed things. We didn't do CG, but I don't know how much time we have. Yeah, we're pretty much running out of time. So we're gonna <laughs> mark a mark on here. We're gonna balance it. It's gonna be super awkward because this thing is huge. Yeah. But we are gonna check the CG, which by I the way- I think it's 108 plus or minus five. We can let's see if we can get it. Quick. If the camera dies, guys, You'll figure it out, I promise. Okay. Keep going. Nope, that way. But that was so clear. 180, 180 millimeters. Okay, 180 millimeters. Get yourself a pair of calipers and use the calipers or a tape measure in this case. 180, I only go to 150. So we'll probably have to get a tape measure out and do it because we can't even measure it with our normal calipers. 
But the idea is since you wanna check your CG with the plane upside down, and you wanna balance it on your fingers, it's gonna be rather awkward with it such is. a huge plane. So we're probably gonna to have to do it off camera anyway. Position the battery, and then you guys are good to go. So stay tuned, so much more from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks guys for watching.